Chapter 51, Encounter Inside the desolate city ruins in the western part of planet Fadea, there were traces of collapsed buildings everywhere, the green trees on both sides of the road were severed from the middle, and the broken branches and leaves were scattered on the ground, the leaves and waste paper swayed in the blowing wind, the air was filled with a pungent smell. A large group of people was unsteadily walking on a public road filled with cracks and breaking points. The originally beautiful, mechanized and smooth road had been split into sections. There were cracks densely spread out like spider webs, continuously giving sparks from inside, and occasionally violent exploding sounds and a ball of fire were gradually rising too. Looking at the former bustling city which has changed beyond recognition, every fade a person's eyes were full of sadness, the emotion of being weak unwillingly lingering on their chests. Duokila, is your people's spaceship somewhere around here? Zayaya flatly asks the Fadea leader. Yes, sir, we will soon reach it. It was originally a reserve spaceship for emergency use which was docked beforehand in an underground spaceport. The Fadea leader Duokila, who was walking behind heard Zayaya's question and quickly answered. As the aliens' attack came too suddenly, Fadea people were not even able to react, and disaster had arrived at them. Hence, Immediately after which the spacecraft's docked in spaceport and large garrison were destroyed, and now the only spaceship available on planet Fadea is that reserve spaceship which is used in special circumstances. Well, you should hurry up, those alien have energy detectors and if you slow down they'll discover you. Zayaya looked at them with a frown. Yes. Yes. Startled, Duokila hurriedly nodded, then shouted towards everyone to speed up. After struggling on the edge of life and death, these Fadea people were full of dread towards Frisia's alien subordinates. Hearing that the aliens may be chasing after them, everyone exerted their utmost strength and quickened up their pace. Soon after, Duokila led everyone to the outskirts far away from the city. The scenery of this place was completely different from the ruins of the city. It was a forest surrounded by row upon row of trees everywhere. The more than 10 meters tall trees were densely arranged in an orderly manner. It was unexpectedly not affected by the rupturing of continents' tectonic plates. Sir Zayaya, an underground basement constructed from alloy is underneath this forest, and that reserve spaceship is docked inside. Duokila said, pointing to the neat and orderly forest in front of him. Eyes narrowing, Zayaya gently nodded, understanding. It turned out that this entire forest is built on top of a huge base made of alloy, no wonder it was not affected by the movements of the continents' tectonic plates. Hurry up and enter the base. If you are late, then I am afraid something unexpected may come up. Yes, sir. All the Fadea people suddenly became busy. Following the directions of several young and strong people, they hurried to the entrance of the base. Within a few moments, the more than 10,000 Fadea people had all entered inside the base. Next, they started the examination and maintenance of the reserve spaceship. It was not a small amount of work, but fortunately, Fadea people were almost all scientists and maintenance of equipment was as simple as drinking water for them. Zayaya lingered inside the base for a while and saw the spaceship which was the last hope of Fadea people. It was actually a gigantic spaceship which was more than 10 kilometers in length. Its whole body exuded a silver-gray luster, and 10-plus alloy-built robotic arms were extending out of the bottom in the surroundings. It was looking like a huge white monster from distance. Seeing it for the first time, he was shocked by the advanced technology of Fadea people. These people seemed to especially love the silver-gray color, their planet and space corridors all were of such color, and even the spaceship was of similar color. These people have such advanced technology, but their physical strength is so weak. It's a miracle that they were not conquered by other forces yet. Zayaya inwardly thought. Planet Fadea was located at the junction of the east and south region of the north area of Milky Way. Clearly, it was not swallowed by other forces because it was located at the junction of the two regions. But in the end, planet Fadea couldn't escape the fate of being conquered. Strange, with Fadea people's wisdom it's impossible for them to not be on alert about dangers even a little bit. Zayaya shook his head feeling puzzled. Logically, Fadea people had been living in the universe for so many years that it was impossible for them to not know about the darkness of the universe, then why hadn't they responded even a little bit? Duokila what is the ancient warrior mentioned earlier by that alien? Zayaya immediately asked Duokila. Duokila revealed a confused look and shook his head, I'm not too sure about this. It seems like the super warrior that my race's elder generation researched in ancient times. No one knows the specific details because it was too long ago. The elder generation created the super warrior to protect the race but it actually became the root cause of near destruction of the Fadea race, 
it's simply ironic. Zayaya faintly sighed and didn't say anything. Thinking of ancient warriors, it could be that they are similar to Bioandroid's warrior. Similar to Scions, perhaps Fadea people had already forgotten the legends of ancient times because of race's migration. However, it is also good. Because Fadea people are facing life and death situation, he was able to easily subdue them. Suddenly, Zayaya's face changed, he sensed that dozens of powerful auras were flying straight toward them. And among them, one of the aura was exceptionally icy and powerful. It was majestic and grand similar to a huge mountain compared to the other dozens of auras. It was Zarban's aura. Zayaya's face turned grave. He frowned and said, I didn't expect Zarban to actually come in person with a squad. Duokila, immediately make everyone hide inside the spacecraft and then start all the protection functions of the base. Zayaya didn't hesitate and decisively ordered Duokila. What happened, sir? Duokila discerned that something bad had happened while looking at Zayaya's face. He then thought of the thing that Zayaya had mentioned earlier before looking at the energy detector in Zayaya's hand. Have the aliens come to attack? Duokila's face suddenly turned pale. Zayaya nodded. Zarban is bringing along his alien subordinates and rushing over here. He is expected to arrive in three minutes. Don't ask much, execute my orders now. A cold voice sounded beside Duokila's ears. When he heard that the enemy would arrive in just three minutes, his whole body felt weak. Yes, sir, I'll arrange it right away, he replied with trembling voice. After seeing Duokila trotting off, Zayaya leisurely looked towards the sky, and with an instant transmission arrived more than 300 kilometers away from the underground base to a place which was the only way to go to the base. Zayaya intends to intercept Zarban here. Zarban, let me take a look at how much strong you are as Frisia's right-hand man. Without any fear of the strong uneasiness, Zayaya only felt the blood in his whole body boiling, extremely excited. In an instant, three minutes passed. There were dozens of shadows flying over from the faraway horizon, lead by a handsome man with dark green hair Zarban. When he saw the black-haired boy blocking the road in front, Zarban waved his hand, stopping all his subordinates and then watched the boy full of interest. This boy, what is his background? Floating in the air, Zarban revealed a cold and ruthless smile on his lips while both of his hands were hugging his chest. There were many kinds of human races in the universe and the differences among those different races were also very small. The battle armor worn by Zayaya was the most widely used armor in the north area of Milky Way. Therefore, Zarban could not immediately guess which race Zayaya belongs to. Tut tut, I hope this boy will bring me a little bit of fun. Fully interested, Zarban looked at Zayaya with a faint smile hanging on his handsome face. Chapter 52, Fighting Zarban Sir Zarban, this is the energy response detected when Jita vanished. But don't know why the other's energy level only showing 540 battle power. On the side, an alien pressed on the energy detector and reported the detected data. Boy, you should not be someone from planet Fadea, right? Could you tell me how you killed that Jita with your abilities? Zarban's movements were graceful and his voice was peaceful and honest just like a well-educated aristocrat gentleman. If you didn't know his true colors, then it was easy to get deceived by his acting skills. You mean that lizard person? If you want to know then you can come and test it yourself. Zayaya had a faint smile on his face, but he was already completely on guard in his heart as he knew there was still a big disparity between him and Zarban. Dot. Zayaya clearly knows that he is disadvantaged, but even then he chose to directly confront Zarban, he actually has his own purpose for it. First is to test how far is his personal strength compared to the mainstream experts of the universe, while second is to delay Zarban and his squad, and gain additional time for Fadea Race's people. After all, Fadea Race is the first group of subordinates that he subdued. If they were annihilated here, it would be too much of a pity. Of course, the more important reason is that he has teleportation ability, which, at critical times can become a life-saving ability. If possible, he is very much willing to have a good fight with Zarban. Scions can only improve after experiencing real fights. Ha ha ha, you really are fearless. Boy, you have to know. Not everyone is good-natured like me. Zarban gently smiled, his tone was very calm seemingly not angry at all, but hidden under his golden pupils an evil radiance began to stir. He <laughs> he. Zayaya sneered, his entire body on guard and then secretly started to maneuver the aura inside his body. Shoo. A rapid sound of tearing of air appeared. Zayaya decided to strike first. His figure suddenly disappeared from the front, 
and with bang 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 fighting sounds, the aliens around Zarban gave painful cries in quick succession, and then directly fell down from the high altitude. At this moment, the energy detector beeped with rapid alarm sounds, the data on the glass monocle rapidly flashed a few times and again quickly restored to the original state. As Ziaya's movements were extremely fast, an average person definitely wouldn't be able to see them. So this scene may have been appeared somewhat baffling to others, but Zarban could clearly see. Clap clap clap. Applause sounded. Gently smiling, Zarban lightly applauded while loudly shouting. Among everyone present only he was able to clearly see all of Ziaya's movements, so Zarban knew it would have been impossible for his alien subordinates to win against Ziaya, it seems like he would have to intervene personally. Ha ha ha, good skills. Boy, you are much more powerful than my subordinate soldiers. Do you have any interest in joining Frisia Corps? I can personally recommend you to King Frisia, Zarban calmly said to Ziaya. He <laughs> he, I have no interest in becoming Frisia's hunting dog. That's too bad. Neither happy nor angry, Zarban covered his mouth while regretfully shaking his head, and casually walked to the front of Ziaya, since you are not willing to work for King Frisia, then you can go die. Looking grave, Ziaya felt a huge sense of oppression just by looking at the Zarban. Boom. Not concealing his strength anymore, Ziaya's body crazily erupted out with force, immediately forming a thick indistinct aura around him producing ZIZI sounds in the air causing the atmosphere to partially distort. The energy detector on Zarban's ear beeped and the data continuously increased finally stopping at minus 14,500. Oh, it's unexpectedly 14500. Zarban said in surprise. What race are you from, is it Sion? No, Sions cannot possibly have such high battle power. Zarban guessed Ziaya's race, though Ziaya looks exactly like a Sion, a Sion couldn't have such battle power at a young age. Moreover, he also doesn't have the characteristic feature of a scion behind him, a tail. Whoosh! Suddenly Zarban's figure disappeared from the front. Ziaya warily sensed his surroundings, his eyes followed Zarban's figure and quickly determining Zarban's position, extended a fist to attack, but Ziaya felt something wrong when he attacked, his fist had missed. After image. Ziaya's complexion severe, he turns around and retreated, his moves smooth and consistent and then carefully looked to determine. Suddenly, he felt something wrong towards one side and quickly dodged. Bang! Zarban's fists passed from his side, and a fierce storm smashed on the ground. The ground violently shook, and a huge crater of a kilometer area was smashed on the ground and a deep ravine appeared changing beyond recognition. As for the aliens that Zarban brought with him, they were long ago fling to the side to who knows where due to the intense explosion of the fight. So close! Ziaya soared to a high altitude, and looked at the ground turned crater thinking with a lingering fear. Hehe, <laughs> you actually dodged my attack. So outstanding at such a young age, it seems you cannot be allowed to leave off. Seemingly out of nowhere, Zarban had appeared above Ziaya. When? Ziaya was shocked, then his body's pores tightened and made a defensive posture. Zarban smiled gracefully, and suddenly clenched both of his hands, violently slamming at Ziaya's head. Suddenly, Ziaya felt his brain turning dizzy, and his body rapidly fell down. When he was very close to the ground, Ziaya used his key to attack towards the ground, stabilizing his body with the rebound. At this moment, Zarban once again arrived and continuously launched fierce attacks at him while he passively defended, his body had quickly filled with wounds. Boom! 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 Ziaya and Zarban mutually attacked each other with fists and punches. As they were moving at high speeds, you can only see two phantom shadows flickering. Fighting scenes continued to expand, mountains, lakes, forests, grasslands, and a large area of land was destroyed. Ziaya stopped his body and gasped. After the short fight, he had exhausted a lot of physical strength. In contrast, Zarban only had some damage to the battle armor on his body with almost no injuries on his body and his breathing remained the same. One in difficult situation, another graceful, it could obviously be seen who is strong and who is weak. The disparity is really not small. Bang! A heavy blow connected. Ziaya's body quickly fell. Rumble! A huge mushroom cloud instantly rose from the originally cracked land, and thick dust blocked the sunlight suddenly filling the entire land with darkness. A deep pit appeared on the ground. Ziaya, with one hand supporting the ground, was half kneeling in the middle of the pit. Haha, your ability to withstand attacks is good, not bad. 
Zarban twirled his neck, his bones making creaking sounds. Shu, his figure again disappeared, his foot kicking towards Zayaya's abdomen. With a solemn expression, Zayaya's both hands caught the foot, but in an instant, his body was kicked flying far away, and if not because his body was sufficiently strong, this kick would have snapped both of his hands. The disparity is too big. The whole hand feeling numb, Zayaya's mind instantly flashed with a thought, bitterly laughing. Shu. Zayaya wiped the blood stains at the corners of his mouth, and teleported far away from the battlefield, observing Zarban from an extremely far away place. Just now, the first confrontation has given him a clear picture of the huge disparity between Zarban and him. Without using superpowers, he is absolutely not a match for Zarban. Zarban's current battle power is close to 20,000 which is more than 5,000 compared to mine. It is difficult to make up for this disparity and, until now, Zarban is still in a playful mood and has not become ruthless. If he still had his tail, then maybe he can transform into Great Abe to do battle, but these were just random thoughts, nothing more. Because even though Great Abe transformation can upgrade his battle power, but it has too many uncertainties and most importantly, will expose his scion identity. He knows that Great Ape Transformation has a very serious problem, that is, large size which can cause the body's movement speed to slow down. Just like Super Scion's transformation into a muscular body, although the energy increases and the strength of a single attack rise sharply, the speed does not increase. This may not be a problem in low-level battles, but it can be fatal in high-speed battles. As long as your opponent's speed is fast enough, there are countless methods to kill the Scion in Great Ape Transformation, Severing the tail is just one of the simplest and direct method. In the world of martial arts, speed defines the winner. Rather than say that great ape transformation is used for attacking, it's more of a brute force based defense. Encountering a real expert, this kind of defense is full of loopholes. Throwing these useless thoughts to the back of his mind, Zayaya began to concentrate on preparing for the fight. Zarban's figure quickly appeared in front of him with a confused look, strange, what method did you use to come here? I couldn't even catch your movements. Ha <laughs> ha, guess. Zayaya smiled heartily, exposing two rows of white teeth. Zarban licked his lips with disdain, his handsome face finally became impatient. He had played enough cat and mouse game, it's time to use all of his strength. Don't know how much of his attacks the other can withstand. Chapter 53, You Cannot Be Envious When he saw Zarban's expression beginning to change, Zayaya's expression also changed. He knew that Zarban was not planning to continue playing with him. Before Zarban hasn't reacted, he has to attack first and grasps the rhythm of the battlefield or else he would have to face a serious Zarban, which is not something he could handle. These thoughts had just flashed through his mind, when Zayaya's dark eyes revealed a faint blue brilliance, he was prepared to launch his space superpower. At the same time, Zarban keenly sensed a little bit of danger, and his heart couldn't help but palpitate, but then his eyebrows scrunched up. He faintly smiled finding his indescribable nervousness laughable. As King Frisia's subordinate who is highly prestigious, what situations has he not experienced? In front of him is only an insignificant brat, that's all. He only needs three minute, no, one minute to kill him. He stopped considering, and with a sneer on his face, prepared to send the opposite boy on his way. However, just as he was preparing to attack, something unexpected happened. Zarban suddenly found that the surrounding air had actually become extremely sticky, and he even felt an external force crushing him when breathing. It was a powerful restriction from space. Uh, what's going on? Zarban frowned, his expression turning serious. His body had rigidly frozen in midair and it had become extremely difficult to make even slightest movements. At this moment, it was as if there were countless invisible shackles attached to his hands and feet, making him unable to move. What exactly is happening? Why can't I move? Suddenly, Zarban's expression greatly changed. He suddenly felt something wrong and without his former graceful bearing, fiercely looked towards Zayaya and asked, Boy, is this your trick? The answer is correct. And next, I will make you properly enjoy the feeling of being trampled, which you will never forget unfeelingly, Zayaya floated before Zarban, a brilliant smile hanging on his face. When his voice faded, his face instantly turned into ice-cold water of midwinter and then launched an attack towards Zarban. His palms continuously pushed to the front, leaving countless afterimages of palms in the air, and then nearly a hundred blazing white key waves flew out from his hands as if silver snakes fluttering, exuding a frightening aura. The power of every key wave could destroy at least a medium-sized city. Boom. Boom. 
boom. Numerous key waves pierced through the air and instantly arrived in front of Zarban, exactly at the center of his body. Suddenly, numerous bright spots rose in the sky, and for a moment the black clouds brightly lit up as if it was daytime. Energy Ball Zayaya made a prompt decision and shouted in a clear voice. One hand, one move, a bright white dazzling energy ball appeared on his palm and then shot out straight like an arrow, very fast, producing sharp exploding sounds from friction with the air. Zarbin was frozen in mid-air, and could only stare fixedly at the energy ball getting bigger and bigger and getting closer and closer to him. Soon, the energy ball hit the target directly, and in the blink of an eye, an even more enormous mushroom cloud rose. Hiss, the explosion produced a huge shock wave, and faintly discernible vague ripples continuously spread out in all directions in the sky, suddenly clearing all the dust covering the sky and earth. Ah! A miserable cry sounded. When the smoke had gradually dispersed, Zarban's injured figure emerged. At this moment he was in a sorry state, his dark green hairs messily scattered over shoulders, the protective armor was torn apart, and his entire body doesn't have an intact place left. His two arms were hanging down and from the twisted appearance of the bones, they must have been broken. Ah, damn, I will not let you off. A miserable howl containing infinite hatred sounded. As King Frisia's right-hand man, when had he ever suffered such humiliation? Even when facing Jinya Force, he could talk with them as equal. He was regretting if he had known earlier that the other side has a superpower, he wouldn't have played around and directly killed him before the other could use his superpower. Good, good, you have succeeded in making me angry. Zarban grew more and more angry, and finally couldn't help but shout, his expression turning malevolent. The aura on his body began to unceasingly increase. Zarban also has the body transformation ability, but unless as a last resort, he really hadn't wanted to use it. Hum. Zayaya's eyes flashed. Just now, he found that the space ability's restriction surrounding Zarban had slightly trembled for a moment. His heart couldn't help but sink, he could feel Zarban's energy rising. Towards the other's energy increment, his space superpower wasn't able to restrict the other even by a little. Superpower's strength is not enough. Zayaya understood the root cause of this incident. Although with the increase in his strength, his space superpower's strength had gradually increased, it still needs to be enhanced in terms of combat capability. When confronting real strong experts, his superpower is not much useful. Soon, there was a crack in the sky like a tadpole writhing and struggling, a disturbing signal. Then with a burst of crashing sounds, the sky like the surface of a smooth mirror suddenly shattered, the numerous crystal clear fragments changed into dazzling bright spots, disappearing into space. Zayaya trembled all over, a feeling of nausea welling in his heart. His space superpower was actually broken. An ugly, toad-like alien was standing at the place where space had shattered. Surging blood was continuously flowing down from his four limbs and head, and the whole body was full of shocking wounds. Zarban finally broke free from Zayaya's superpower after body transformation. Only right now, he was in an absolutely disheveled state, with no image to speak of. Bastard, today I will make it so that you can neither live nor die. The ugly face abnormally distorted, a curse spread out of Zarban's mouth as if it has come from the abyss. Right now, although Zarban's whole body was wounded and his two arms were broken, the suffocating imposing aura emitting out of his whole body was as heavy as a huge mountain, pressuring every single cell on Zayaya's body. 25,000 battle power. It was almost twice as much as Zayaya's own battle power. It should be said that he is really worthy to be called Zarban, after body transformation he can no wonder break his space restrictions. Resisting against the pressure coming from the sky, Zayaya wildly laughed, the blood in his whole body boiling. Ho <laughs> ho. Following the gushing of the imposing aura, Zarban's muscles were stretched taut, continuously emitting deep and low sounds. His two golden eyes unwaveringly stared at Zayaya, while pressuring his with the imposing aura. Such a formidable aura. For a moment, Zayaya's heart suddenly trembled from Zarban's imposing aura. As the violent storm struck, he had to block the front of his forehead with his arms, his body swaying from side to side in the enormous storm like a duckweed. Break for me. Zayaya forcefully swung hard, splitting the fierce winds in front of him, and then roared, his whole body's strength burning wildly. Suddenly, the two people simultaneously disappeared, and the next moment they collided. Full of rage, Zarban instantly leaped to the front of Zayaya, his berserk legs vigorously brought along shock waves which issued swishing sounds from the air friction. A loud sound of bang could be heard. Zarban's leg rapidly attacked and Zayaya suddenly crossed his arms, 
stopping Zarban's leg which produced a bang. Boom! The ground suddenly collapsed, and a huge force acted on him making him retreat several meters from the recoil force. Puff! Zaya's whole body was in pain, he spurted out a mouthful of blood from his throat. Obviously, in the strength competition, he was worse more than planned, Zarban's simple attack has made him seriously injured. Ha ha ha, go to hell! Zarban gave a sinister laugh. And not giving any time, he came to himself and gave another kick with his other leg. Bang! Zayaya was once again hit and his whole body flew out like an artillery shell. Rumble! The ground was cracked from the impact, and smoke pervaded the air. Instantly, Zayaya jumped up from the ground where the impact occurred, and came out of the thick smoke and attacked the opponent. The two people continued to fight between the sky and the earth, the violent whirlwind spread out with earth-shattering momentum. As the two people were using all of their strength, the whole planet Fadea was slightly trembling. In the distance, the aliens, who had escaped unharmed stared dumbfounded at the fight between Zayaya and Zarban, the energy detectors on their ears couldn't bear the load and had burned down long ago. Heavens, they're really powerful enough to make people despair. The aliens' faces were deathly pale. They looked at each other while shivering, ready to leave the battlefield at any moment. Haha, <laughs> don't tell me you only have this few tricks? If so, it's really disappointing. Zarban struck while recklessly taunting. During the whole fight, Zayaya was always in disadvantage, to be precise, he was always being beaten one-sidedly, and rarely succeeded in attacking Zarban. Although Zarban has lost two arms, he couldn't make up for the twice the disparity of energy. After a while, his whole body was badly injured. It won't do, there is huge difference in battle power. With a loud sound, Zayaya was smashed straight into the ground from the high altitude. In the enormous deep pit, his whole body was aching from making even a little bit of movement. Now he roughly knows, how strong he is when he goes all out and has also clearly experienced the abilities of universe high-level warriors. So, now he should eat Senzu Bean. Hence, under his opponent's eyes, Zayaya revealed a weird smile and then disappeared. Zarban lost his traces, and his new thunderbolt-like attack hit the air. At a place far from the battlefield, Zayaya calmly fished out a green dried flat bean from his pocket and stuffed it to his mouth, chewing. The magical Senzu bean recovered him to his peak state at once, and he was completely healed. Senzu bean is really essential ah. Uh. Zayaya moved around his limbs. Compared to before, his battle power has significantly improved, and he was in an extremely good condition with his entire body full of strength. Zarban's head was bleeding, he had long ago lost his previous calm and elegance. His slightly protruding eyes looked stunned at Zayaya, who had regained his full strength. Both eyes flashing with an inconceivable radiance, he roared with grief and indignation. Why did your injuries suddenly recover completely? Zarban was injured, and Hart was very sad and indignant. Why does this little human have so many magical abilities? Battle power is unusually high which in itself is nothing much, and unexpectedly still has an unfathomable superpower. He was able to seriously injure him, and after breaking free from the other's superpower, he thought he could kill him but unexpectedly this kid could still surprisingly fight back. Now, he has again returned to his peak state. Zayaya cast an innocent look toward Zarban and smilingly said, You cannot be envious. Then, a blue brilliance once again appeared in Zayaya's eyes. Compared to the previous dull blue color of the space superpower, this brilliance was even more pure, more beautiful, like a translucent shiny blue crystal. Chapter 54 Zarban's death. Zayaya slightly parted his lips and coldly spit out a few words, time, stop. Yes, he can't wait any longer. There is a very big disparity between him and Zarban, and he obviously can't make up for this disparity. But who made a rule that the fighting must be based on the level of battle power? This is not swapping pointers, but matter of life and death, so resorting to other methods is allowed. Suddenly, the entire planet turned into a blue world and everything on planet Fadea paused. It was the second time that Zayaya has used his time superpower against an enemy, the first time was against Xiling body transformed into great ape, and this is the second time. Time superpower is different from space superpower, as there is no significant improvement in it over the past few years and with his current battle power it could only pause time for three seconds, nothing more. Moreover, the paused time will be shortened by different degrees according to the strength of the target who is being paused. Sure enough, after bringing Zarban, whose battle power had reached 25,000 into the time pause range, the energy inside his body rapidly depleted. Thus, 
I reckon that time will only be paused for a maximum of two seconds. Only two seconds. It is basically the time pause limit. But it is enough. With a rough estimate in mind, Zaya's body became a ray of light, and in the blink of an eye arrived before Zarban. In the icy blue world, everything except Zaya was still. In midair, Zarban was paused with a stunned face, the ugly toad was looking forward with an expressionless face. Because Zarban's energy was too strong, he didn't dare to be the slightest bit negligent according to his current capabilities. So, he didn't make any unnecessary moves and directly extended his hand, sticking his palm at the place of Zarban's heart. A cold and stern light flashed through his eyes, and Zaya forcefully bent his five fingers lightly, and his body's energy quickly converged to the palm of his hand, a dazzling color immediately appearing on the center of his palm. With a tremble, an energy ball was continuously being compressed in the palm of his hand. Chi Chi! The vast energy agglomerated into a peanut-sized bright white light, surrounded by twirling faint blue electric arcs. Crackle, the arcs continuously flashed. The little white flash has agglomerated more than half of the energy from his whole body and after going through the maximum compression, its might have increased by more than hundredfold. He is sure that if this small flash of energy erupts, it would be sufficient to destroy everything within 10 kilometers of its diameter. Zarban, go to hell! A cold voice sounded and Zaya looked at Zarban, expressionless. Hwala! The ice blue world suddenly shattered. At this time, Zarban recovered his perception, for him time was never paused. From his perspective, only the enemy which should have been standing in front of him had unknowingly disappeared. An unknown foreboding emerged from the bottom of his heart, he instinctively regained his mind and felt an indescribable tremble. Puff! A small finger and a fine beam of light pierced through his chest, and then came out from his back. Suddenly feeling a sharp pain in his heart, Zarban slowly lowered his head, and what welcomed him was the two dark icy eyes of Zayaya. How is he in front of my chest? Perplexed, Zarban opened his mouth and then looked down, the heart's position was burned black, and the smell of hot blood and cooked meat unceasingly flowed outward. His heart was penetrated. Zarban found it hard to believe. If the heart is punctured, for the vast majority of the living creatures in the universe, it would only have one common outcome, that is death. Zarban's physique was not sturdy enough to survive after the heart was crushed. How could this be? His eyes suddenly widened. He could not understand, how did this small brat standing opposite him did it? His Adam's apple moved, and blood spurted out from his throat, due to lack of oxygen an uncontrolled burst of dizziness appeared in his brain. He opened and closed his lips, his words full of unwillingness, who could have thought that I, Zarban would unexpectedly die at the hands of a nobody. You can only blame yourself for being too arrogant. Zayaya coldly said. He could only defeat Zarban because of many coincidences. If Zarban hadn't underestimated the enemy from the start and had wanted to play the cat and mouse game, instead had used all of his strength, Zayaya wouldn't have gotten the chance to activate superpower. Ha ha ha, right, I was too arrogant cough, cough, I am not willing. However, King Frisia will not let you off, Zarban spit out a mouthful of blood, his consciousness beginning to get blurry. Who would have thought that as an important henchman of King Frisia, he would die on such an unknown planet. Boom. Zarban's body started to swell and violently exploded, his flesh and blood turning into flying ash. Zayaya sighed, the lion still utilizes his full strength when fighting rabbit, underestimating the enemy on the battlefield is an absolutely no. Zarban's fate given him the alarm. No matter how strong the opponent, you have to at least to keep vigilance in the heart. Just as Zarban had said, he died very unjustly. If he wasn't careless before, if Zayaya didn't have so many strange superpowers, if Zayaya hadn't eaten Senzu bean at the last moment, then the result may not be this. Unfortunately, there is no if. Few dozen kilometers away, those aliens, who accompanied Zarban, saw with their own eyes that the overbearing Sir Zarban had died at the hands of the youngster. Everyone was muddle-headed, looking ahead with a lifeless look in their eyes. For a moment, the scene had sunk into silence. After a while, an alien who had hairs growing on his entire body reacted, shouting in astonishment. Sir Zarban is dead. Ah, Sir Zarban is dead. With a loud shout, the panic suddenly spread out, the alien screamed and looked at Zayaya with eyes full of fear, and then everyone fled in all directions to escape. But how can Zayaya let them escape? Dealing with this kind of small fishes of battle power one or two thousand, he doesn't need to expend too much strength. With a flash, Zayaya's body appeared in front of the aliens, 
you people have also done many bad things, so you can all go to hell with Zarbon. Speaking, his palm lightly moved in the air and boundless energy spread out to the surroundings in the sky as magical ripples. The alien's body immediately became immobile, strangely confined in midair. Swish! Deep dark red cracks appeared in midair, and then like a prehistoric giant beast opening his ferocious mouth to take a bite, soon the dozens of aliens were swallowed into the cracks. All these deep cracks were space fragments, feeling unpleasant inside, after some seconds the aliens were all crushed into powder from the space force. Who, all done? Zayaya clapped his hand and the deep cracks immediately disappeared. Landing on the ground that had been changed beyond recognition from the previous fight, the scorched earth seemed to have just undergone numerous bombings of huge tons of nuclear bombs. The huge uneven craters of several thousand meters diameters were spread out everywhere in the surroundings and boiling lava was gushing out from the center. After a attack from space by Zarbon and his fierce battle with Zayaya, planet Fadea's tectonic plates have completely loosened and are expected to slide inevitably into the Earth's mantle soon. This planet is expected to become the scene of purgatory in a short period of time and is no longer suitable for living. Resting for a while on a half-person-sized stone, Zayaya had completely recovered his strength, and then he searched for the remaining alien auras on planet Fadea. In addition to aliens who had accompanied Zarbon, there were about a dozen aliens still scattered around in various places, among which there were several people with maximum battle power 3000. To weed out the grass, remove the roots. Zayaya thought for a moment and teleported to the aliens. When those aliens saw Zayaya suddenly appearing, it was as if they had seen a prey, they didn't pay any attention to him and scrambled to be the first one to kill him. It goes without saying what was the result of those aliens, Zayaya threw them all inside the space cracks. A few minutes later, Zayaya had killed all the aliens on planet Fadea. Suddenly losing several hundreds of Frisia Corps soldiers, especially Zarbon, a senior member. Don't know what kind of expression Frisia will have after finding out this news? Zayaya inwardly thought, feeling delighted. However, with Frisia's temperament it is impossible for him to feel even a little bit sad, but feeling anger, however, is certain. Thinking of the sight of Frisia angrily throwing down his wine glass, Zayaya felt cheerful in his heart. Chapter 55, Frisia's Response Returning to Fadea People's underground base, he saw that they were currently doing maintenance of the spaceship. As everyone was busy, Zayaya found a quiet place to lie down and rest. Sir Zayaya, you have returned. Did those aliens made things difficult for you? Duokila stepped forward and politely inquired. In fact, as Zayaya had gone to confront Zarbon and others, he was feeling very anxious in his heart. The earth shaking and suddenly changing, horrifying scene from before as if the sky had shattered was still lingering in his mind. That dreadful apocalyptic scene was strongly imprinted in his memory, difficult to erase. Duokila had never seen such a frightening scene, making him terribly fearful. His heart couldn't help but sweat cold bullets for Zayaya fearing that he may not be those aliens' opponents. This time Fadea people can only rely on Zayaya, and if even he is not those aliens' match, then they can only wait for their race to be exterminated. Those aliens are too strong, strong to the, the point that Duokila couldn't help but sweat cold bullets for Zayaya. He didn't dare to imagine what would have happened if Zayaya lost, would they still have any hope to survive? Now that Zayaya had returned safely, he could finally put down the worries in his heart. He gave a long sigh of relief and the anxious look on his face turned into surprise, hurriedly walking forward. Those weaklings are my opponent. Zayaya glanced at Duokila, questioning in an indifferent voice. It's not that he was being arrogant, but he is clearly aware that if he wants to subjugate the Fadea race, then he must show them his mightiness and convince them that it is the right choice to follow him, and those aliens were naturally his stepping stone. Finished listening, Duokila was slightly startled, the severe cold aura immediately made him tremble. However, instead of getting terrified, he was feeling happiness. Sir Zayaya, you mean the aliens have been killed by you? Yes, it must be. Duokila turned sluggish, but then his eyes started shining, he opened his mouth to speak several times but the words got stuck in his throat. What is it? Zayaya faintly smiled. Sir Zayaya, before there was a sudden violent explosion everywhere, and the whole planet was shaking. Was it caused by your fight with the enemy, Duokila didn't dare to presumptuously decide by himself. He paid attention to Zayaya's face and carefully asked. That's right, those explosions were caused by the energy from my and aliens fight, it had hit the planet's crust. Zayaya immediately confirmed. Sure enough. Duokila's pupils suddenly contracted, 
his face revealing a shocked look. He never thought that humans can actually use such frightening strength just with their body, unmatched by science and technology. Duokila's breath became somewhat hurried, Sir Zayaya, so what was the final result? Just now didn't I say it? Of course, I had defeated them, there are already no more aliens left on this planet. Zayaya glared with displeasure and said, he then casually waved his hand and continued, I just didn't think that the enemies were so weak, I couldn't even warm up, and they all just fell to the ground. Yes. This answer was somewhat hard to accept for Duokila. Zayaya's so-called weak were the culprits who had destroyed planet Fadea. Ah. Suddenly an uncontrollable excitement bubbled up from his heart and tears filled his eyes, his body actually started crawling on the ground, simultaneously crying and shouting. It's good that those intruders are all dead. Sir Zayaya, you took revenge for us, now the members of my race who had died can rest in peace. Yes, your people can now rest in peace. Zayaya picked his eyes and casually comforted him. When Duokila's mood subsided, he once again frowned and said, Although I have annihilated all the aliens who had invaded planet Fadea, it is regrettable that planet Fadea is no longer suitable for living since planet's crust had collapsed. No worries, Sir Zayaya, it was already very rare for you to be able to kill those invaders, thank you. Thank you for avenging us. Duokila suddenly straightened his body and solemnly bowed to Zayaya with a serious expression. Zayaya calmly received Duokila's bow, he knew that at present he was not only receiving gratitude from Duokila but also Fadea people's loyalty. But these aliens were just the vanguard of Frisia's subordinates and when he receives the news of here, he is sure to dispatch even more powerful enemies. So, Duokila, you should hurry up and gather the remaining Fadea people and also inspect the condition of spaceship as soon as possible. We must quickly leave planet Fadea before the next group of aliens arrives. Yes, sir. Duokila energetically nodded his head, at this time his petite body seemed to be filled with unlimited motivation as he began to direct the members of his race to hurriedly finish the work. It is a tedious and complicated task to evacuate people. No matter whether the tallying of the remaining people or the reserve spaceships testing, they all were tasks which require a huge workload and especially as they don't know when the next group of invaders will arrive, the time was apparently even more precious. They must seize every second and leave planet Fadea as soon as possible. Regarding the subsequent miscellaneous and complicated tasks for evacuation, Duokila made a thorough division of labor. Zayaya saw everything and nodded with satisfaction. Fadea people were also working very hard. After Zayaya eliminated the aliens lead by Zarban and took revenge for them, their worship for Zayaya had risen to an all-new height, and they were even more approving and loyal to him. Their race often communicates with the civilizations of the universe outside, so they have an idea of the temperaments of the strong powerhouses. Compared to the other strong people in the universe, Sir Zayaya such kind-hearted person has no doubt impressed them the most. North Area, Frisia Headquarters A giant planet which was transformed using technology. In deep and magnificent huge universe's background, stars resembling bright pearls were arranged in an orderly manner, and have been moving in their own trajectories for a long time. Planet Frisia's headquarters, for the entire force is the capital city and its territory, center region. The defenses here were impregnable. The entire planet was completely fitted with the universe advanced technology just like an impregnable fortress such that even a fly couldn't enter. In the outer space, a space fortress resembling a castle was revolving around an icy planet. On both sides of the fortress, an enormous and powerful black turret of several tens of meters of diameter of was shining with a cold light which looked like an ancient behemoth continuously growling and roaring in the starry sky. At this time, within a luxury palace, at a transparent window. Frisia was joyfully standing next to the window, one hand at his back and the other hand holding a glass of wine, leisurely drinking. His pair of scarlet eyes were quietly watching the scene outside the window, cold eyes flashing with a cruel gleam. Dodoria, I heard that King Vegeta of Science is planning rebellion. How do you think I should deal with those Science? Speaking in a cold harsh voice, Frisia handed the wine glass to the attendant on side, and then full of interest asked Dodoria. Those scions really don't know what's good for them, all of them are extremely arrogant. If it wasn't that for their battle power which still has some uses, this subordinate would have long ago took people to their planet Vegeta and destroyed them. Dodoria sneered, he couldn't tolerate scions' arrogant nature. Frisia laughed lightly and lifted the corners of his mouth, revealing an evil smile. Don't worry, Dodoria. After some time, we'll go and eliminate those scions. At that time, I will show you the most beautiful fireworks of the universe. Yes, King Frisia. 
Dotoria was pleasantly surprised. Every time he sees the beautiful scene when Frisia destroys a planet, he felt excited. Oh, by the way, I heard King Vegeta had a son a few years ago, his talent doesn't seem to be bad. He is called Vegeta, right? Frisia asked. Yes. Oh, so shameless, naming his son after the planet's name. King Vegeta's ambitions are not small ah. Dotoria, after some time, go and bring over that Vegeta to Frisia headquarters. Yes, King. Dotoria revealed a sinister smile on his fat face. Just then, the palace gate was opened, and a purple-skinned alien frantically ran over while crawling and reported, King Frisia, latest news from planet Fadea. Oh, what's the news, has Zarbon got the information about ancient warriors so quickly? Frisia said casually. No, no. The alien wiped his sweat, his voice trembling. Speak clearly, what happened? Dotoria scolded. The purple alien shuddered and nervously said, Just now, we received the latest news from headquarters. Sir Zarban encountered a strong enemy on planet Fadea, and everyone was completely annihilated, the energy signal of Sir Zarban has also disappeared. With a bang, Frisia's tail whipped the attendant beside him and the wine glass dropped to the ground and shattered, scattering the bright red wine on the ground. Frisia's face slightly changed, scarlet eyes resembling the pupils of a demon flashed with a frigid light, and coldly asked. What happened? Explain clearly. Um. Sir Zarban had taken more than hundred soldiers of Frisia Corps to planet Fadea to search for clues on ancient warriors, but just an hour ago, the headquarters monitoring planet Fadea suddenly saw a high energy response on the communication device. Then Sir Zarban and his team's signal disappeared, it appears. Sir Zarban have been killed. How is it possible, Zarban's battle power at his peak can reach 25,000 ah? Don't tell me he didn't have enough time for body transformation. Startled, Dotoria asked. He was similarly a high-level attendant who has always accompanied Frisia, so he knows that Zarban's true strength is much stronger than him, then how could he be defeated on such a small planet Fadea? Before losing contact with the detector, it was monitored that Sir Zarban had used his full strength. After speaking, the purple alien himself felt it unfathomable. After a brief moment of surprise, Frisia quickly recovered with an evil smile hanging on his lips, interesting, really interesting, it's unexpected that someone could kill Zarban, ha ha ha, perhaps that person's strength is not weaker than Jinya Force. The purple alien carefully stood and didn't dare to make any movement, heart thumping. Right now, King Freeze is certainly not very happy. Yes, Frisia is not happy right now. Frisia did not feel any sorrow for Zarban's death. He was feeling very angry in his heart, in his mind he only felt that he was blatantly provoked. For him Zarban's death is a provocation, except from his father King Cold and brother Cooler, he, Frisia had never suffered a loss. How can other people kill his subordinates? Dotoria, that planet Fadea should be just a low-level planet, right? Frisia's calm voice was filled with boundless killing intent. Dotoria immediately replied, Yes, Fadea people are just ants with battle power, not more than fifteen. But on such a low-level planet of ants, Zarban has died. Frisia murmured, is it really the work of the legendary ancient warrior of Fadea people? Dotoria, immediately transmit the order to Jinya Force that they must hurry to planet Fadea as soon as possible. I would like to see what kind of strength the so-called ancient warrior possess. It could be said that Frisia is most dreadful of the legend of the so-called Super Scion which has been passed down from ancient times in the Frost Demon race and the other is the recent information of the rampant ancient warrior of the Fadea people. He is dispatching Jinya Force to investigate, this is to use Jinya Force as a bait to test the strength of that ancient warrior ah. Chapter 56, Departure At the same time when Frisia had passed down his orders, on a planet far away in the north area. In a cold and gloomy damp rainforest. Captain Jinyu, just now we received an order from King Frisia to immediately set off for the Fadea planet in the southeast. A white-haired alien tapped down on the communicator and reported to the captain beside him. Captain Jinyu who was eating meat, chewed, spit out a piece of bone, and asked while chewing Fadea planet. It's only a low-level planet. There is no need to make us personally go ah. Jeez, immediately contact Frisia headquarters and clearly ask King Frisia why has he issued such an order? Yes. Captain. The white-haired alien named Jis answered, and then contacted Frisia headquarters, and quickly found out the reason. Captain, I have asked the reason. It's because that Zarban who was King Frisia's henchman was killed on planet Fadea by someone. Zarban, 
King Frisia's advisor, that guy is dead. The fastest member of the Jinya force, Alien Berter was surprised, his face revealing schadenfreude. Jinya force was an ace troop working under Frisia and was not much weaker than Cooler's armored squadron. So, they naturally despised that Zarbon, who was always bossing around when accompanying King Frisia but was, in fact, very weak. Yes, in the eyes of the members of the Jinya force, Zarbon is a small character who was weak. It was especially notable that in the original work's Namek saga, Vegeta had succeeded in killing Zarbon who had body transformed. But when he had encountered the lower-ranked member of Jinya force Rikum, he had lost to him, almost losing his life. Thus, Jinya force can be called an ace troop, and not a single of its member could be underestimated. Hmm, interesting, Zarbon was killed on a low-level planet. Perhaps, we will encounter something interesting on that planet. Jinyu touched his chin and got up, his tall purple body was like a small mountain, emanating a heavy oppressive feeling. The two black horns on the head reflected a bright light under the sunlight. Goldo, who had two small and two big eyes was still gnawing on food. Seeing that the captain seemed interested in planet Fadea, he put down the food and asked, Are we going now? But, even at the earliest, it would take more than two months to reach planet Fadea from here on. I am afraid we will not be able to catch up. Jis frowned. Who cares if we can catch up with him or not, ah? Anyway, it's a mission assigned by King Frisia, as long as we go, Berter's face was indifferent. Since their lifespan was very long, they do not care about the time of one or two months. It can be said that most of their strength was accumulated over time. As for whether they can take revenge for that Zarbon or not, they don't care. Then let's go, we can't anger King Frisia. All the members of the Jinya force laughed heartily, under King Frisia's leadership as long as they can freely commit evil, others they could care less. North area, southeast, planet Fadea. Since the Zaya squad, Frisia's subordinates in name, was performing a mission on planet Longjo which was only short seven days away from planet Fadea. So in order to guard against Frisia from dispatching troops to planet Fadea from the other nearby planets, Zaya ordered the Fadea people to complete all the evacuation work within seven days and then immediately leave the planet in the spaceship. Time is like flowing water, seven days passed in a flash. The maintenance of the spaceship was completed on time. At this moment, there were 157,000 Fadea people gathered in the underground base from various parts of planet Fadea, an extremely sparse number which accounts for only a very small part of the original Fadea population, but it was already their current surviving population. Dot. Looking at the significantly reduced population of his race, Duokila's heart dripped with blood, and his hatred for Frisia Corps again deepened in his heart. He looked at Sir Zayaya, who was not too far away looking cold and completely healed, and respectfully said, Sir Zayaya, all the Fadea people survivors have been gathered here, we can now leave planet Fadea. Duokila is grateful to Sir Zayaya for giving them seven days time to rescue the members of his race. He knows that time for strong people was extremely valuable, for them, Sir Zayaya has wasted seven days here for nothing, what a great favor ah. If not for these seven days, the survivors of his race who could reach the underground base would be much less. Well, then set off. Zayaya lightly waved his hand and indifferently looked at the giant silver spaceship in front of him. No matter how many times he looks at the ship whose body was of dozens of kilometers, it would make him shocked. Yes. Duokila said with a serious look. As Zayaya ordered, a rapid buzzing sound reverberated in the underground base, a red alert light rotating and flashing. When they heard the alert signal, all the Fadea people rushed their movements, and orderly boarded the spaceship under the arrangements of a commander. Buzz. The green forest above the underground base shook from the vibrations, it is probably the last green forest left on planet Fadea. As the planet's tectonic plates had once suffered the bombardment of an ultra-high energy, the stable structure of the planet's crust has completely transformed. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions were continuously appearing. The destructive force of one has surpassed that of the another and has transformed the entire planet into a living hell. Kaka. The forest began to undulate. From above in the sky, the entire orderly forest began to protrude from the middle, and a hole split opened. After which the land sloped upward in two lines and slowly opened like a gate. About ten minutes later, the door more than 20,000 meters long and more than 10,000 meters was wide open. The land began to shake, and the green forest finally couldn't bear the attraction of the gravity and rolled down to both sides, exposing the silvery alloy structure of the two doors. Soon followed by rumbling sounds of explosion. 
the sound of the engine was turned on. Huge flares were emitted upward from the underground base. A silver-gray giant spaceship slowly took off to the sky and continued to accelerate, in the blink of an eye exiting the atmosphere to the outer space. Huala Huala! Above the small silver planet, the two perpendicular space corridors finally began to distort, and with the violent explosion of their interface, the space corridors which represented the highest technological achievements of Fadea people, at this moment, broke into several pieces. Some pieces of the corridor fell into the atmosphere, some entered the starry sky, and some were drifting in the orbit all alone. It was as if witnessing the dazzling civilization of Fadea people slowly dying. Well, Duokila, first find an unoccupied planet to settle down, and then give your everything to research gravity room, I hope to see your results as soon as possible. Yes, Sir Zayaya, we will do our best. Duokila was tense, responding in a loud voice. Planet Fadea was already history. Now, they will follow the plans arranged by Sir Zayaya, he believes that under the leadership of Sir Zayaya, their Fadea civilization will be able to rise again. Chapter 57, Planet Longju In a flash, the Fadea civilization's spaceship was flying in the outer space for a month. In the quiet and deep outer space, a silver-gray giant spaceship looking like a long dragon was flying in the vast starry sky. In the spaceship's main control room, Fadea people were attentively staring at the display screen of a smart computer which was continuously scanning for a suitable planet to dock. Soon a pale yellow planet appeared on the display screen, then few operations were projected onto the screen, as well as the planet's data, pale yellow, rocky planet, age 2.2 billion years, diameter 8,300 kilometers, and severe climate conditions. Not suitable for living beings to live for an extended time. It was not a big planet and its atmospheric environment was abnormal and chaotic. It can act as a temporary docking point. Duokila watched the data on the screen and quickly calculated the energy needed by the spaceship. Well, as this place is already far away from planet Fadea, for a while the Frisia Corps wouldn't be able to find it. Land the spaceship on this planet and settle down on it. As the Fadea race is a very advanced technological civilization, they can transform the bare minimum conditions for the living beings to live here with the help of science and technology. Unfortunately, this technology cannot be applied to the mother planet because Frisia had set his eyes on that planet. After settling down here, you should continue to design the gravity training room and construct it as soon as possible. The door opened and Zayaya walked in dressed in a brand new battle armor. It was Fadea people's latest design, beautiful elegant appearance, the white material was form-fitting, and could change to different sizes following the body's movements, which could minimize the obstructions faced by the body when fighting. Sir Zayaya. Duokila respectfully saluted, revealing a happy expression on his blue face, the initial design of the gravity training room is already completed, scientists can immediately start constructing it as soon as the spaceship has landed. The initial design of the gravity room can be used to adjust up to maximum 500 times the standard gravity, and we have also increased the temperature, pressure, humidity level and other adjustable functions. Zayaya was very satisfied with Duokila's arrangements and happily said, OK, then I will hand the matter of the gravity room to you. Well, I will leave for a while after the spaceship has landed, you had better be careful and hide your tracks. If anything happens, you can notify me via the communication device. Zayaya roughly calculated and determined that Shaq and others had been doing the mission for more than one month, so they should have just about completed the mission. Then, he can return to planet Vegeta with Xiling and others. As for why he was not worried about leaving was not only because he has faith in Fadea people's loyalty, but more importantly, he had already secretly planted space coordinates above the spaceship, perfectly ensuring that he doesn't have to be worried about Fadea people revolting after he leaves. Of course, Zayaya still has confidence in them. As long as they are comfortable working for him, Zayaya will certainly provide them with a brilliant future. Yes, Sir Zayaya. Eyes shining brightly, Duokila answered in a loud voice. Zayaya nodded and then left the main control room. Soon after, an enormous shadow projected downward, and the more than 10-kilometer-long giant spaceship landed on the ground, causing violent tremors for a long period of time. The loose soil and stones were directly flattened, and the land has forcibly caved in by more than 10 meters. Immediately afterward, numerous construction robots flew out from inside the spaceship covering the sky and land like locusts and began to construct the base on a nearby land. Zayaya stood on the observation deck, watching the Fadea people and construction robots bustling about and nodded appreciatively. He then told Duokila, till next mission, and disappeared in front of Duokila's astonished expression. 
Planet Longju, in the primitive forest. After returning to the mission planet, Xiaoya carefully scanned the aura of all the members of Xiaoya squad and found that within this one month, the battle power of all the squad members had improved by varying degrees. With a teleport, Xiaoya arrived at Xiling's side. After not seeing for more than a month, Xiling seems to have matured a lot, she was currently sound asleep on a hammock, her white as jade beautiful thighs were bare and hanging down from the hammock. Perhaps, she felt a formidable aura approaching, Xiling immediately shot up from the hammock on guard, a flowing light flashing through her wide opened eyes. Xiaoya, you're back. When she saw that it was Xiaoya, Xiling shouted in surprise and happily bounced over. Suddenly, she sensed the energy radiating from Xiaoya and narrowed her eyes before asking doubtfully, You have only been gone for a month, how come your battle power has improved so much? She remembered that Xiaoya's battle power was only over 14,500 points a month ago, but in a brief period of time that she had not seen him, it had improved by so much. The strength of key perception is even more sensitive compared to the energy detector. Although Xiaoya had completely converged his strength, it is inevitable that he has to reveal some of his energy, as this energy is how he masks his true strength and is unable to conceal. Like a super expert who has battle power up to 10 million energy, no matter how he converges his strength, he has to at least reveal battle power of more than 10,000, due to this he cannot conceal everything. The more powerful the energy, the more energy will leak out. Of course, it's not that experts can't hide their entire aura, there are naturally some experts who can hide their aura completely. Like God of Destruction Beerus and such, they can certainly do it. It's just that, he, at his current level, can't do it yet. It's a long story. Xiaoya came in front of Xiling and laughingly said. He may have gained the upper hand in his fight with Zarbin and was even able to kill Zarbin with tricks, but there was no need to tell about the dangers he faced to others. If it was not because of his space ability to break away from the battlefield whenever he was on verge of death, and eating a sense of bean during critical times, then who lived and who died wouldn't have been certain. Anyway, Xiaoya himself is very clear, he was on the verge of death on several occasions. However, after fighting with Zarbin, his gains were also quite abundant, he not only subdued Fedea race, but his battle power has also increased by a large amount, a conservative estimate is that he now has reached 18,000 battle power. After listening to Xiaoya recounting, Xiling gave a sigh. She didn't expect that in just one short month such a wonderful thing had happened, Xiaoya's strength had suddenly surpassed her by so much. Somewhat unwilling, Xiling pouted, and said while eyes turning, so you are saying that Fedea people would quickly construct the gravity room. That's right, it should not take too long if everything goes well. He <laughs> he, wait till I get the gravity room, I will not lose to you then. Xiling disdainfully said. Now, among scions, only Xiaoya alone could arouse competitiveness in her, as for others she doesn't even deem to look at them. Then you will have to put in extra effort. Xiaoya encouraged. Oh, by the way, what happened to the others' training? Speaking of proper business, Xiling also turned serious, they also have varying degrees of improvement in this one month, I had also secretly taught them a little about the mysteries of Qi while relaxing in the midst of the mission. The strongest shack has already reached 1,300 battle power. Xiaoya inwardly nodded, they have 1,300 battle power at 12 plus years old. At least they would reach more than 3,000 battle power when they reach adulthood and could be regarded as outstanding among other mid-level warriors. Chapter 58, Rest Then, he discussed training-related things with Xiling. Currently, his battle power has exceeded Xiling by a lot, and his perspective has become bigger, their experiences were naturally not similar. As Earth's training methods pay more attention to the body and mind advancing together, more or less similar to Taoism's philosophy of life, and all this need to be realized through training. As the saying goes, blinded by a single leaf and thus failing to see Mount Tai Asterisk, stuffing one's ears with beans and thus failing to hear the thunder rumbling. Different stages have different kinds of limitations, especially for weak, for them it was much more difficult to understand the thinking of the strong. If at this stage a strong powerhouse can instruct you, then you would have to take a little less detour. Note asterisk have one's view of the important overshadowed by the trivial. When the night was approaching, Xiaoya called over Shaq and others. These young scions, after a brief period of training and coupled with Xiling's intentional or unintentional pointers, have become even more powerful, especially Shaq, who is almost as powerful as the adult Raditz. Seeing the captain who they had not seen for a month, Shaq and the others showed curiosity but they did not inquire about Xiaoya's traces for the past month, 
they just assumed that Captain must be hiding his whereabouts to monitor their improvements. I am very satisfied with your performance in this past one month, oh, even Bailey and Lydia's battle power has reached 1000, looking at everyone, Zayaya teased. Bailey's face suddenly fell, and said dissatisfied, really Captain, now even you can't defeat us. Yes, yes. Lydia touched his cheek and responded. Zayaya looked at them with a calm smile and earnestly said, You cannot defeat me as your battle power is not even comparable to an average adult low-level warrior. But, you are still young, your future achievements will not be small. Are you saying that we can hope to become as powerful as a high-level warrior in future? Seeing the captain praising them, Lydia and Bailey stroked their chins, with an expression as expected it should be like this. Although they were the weakest members of the Zayaya squad, they were not too bad compared to other mid-level warriors. Again encouraging his teammates with few sentences, Zayaya looked towards Shaq and said, Planet Longju's mission is almost completed. I do not intend to apply for a new mission for some time. You should properly rest for a while after returning to Planet Vegeta. As always fighting can sometimes backfire. WHYYYY, but a scion can only get stronger through fighting, battling is fun ah. Puzzled, Bailey's face fell, even Anastasia and Angeline looked dispirited. It's too boring to not fight for days. Looking at them, Zayaya couldn't help but smile. Scions sure are a warlike race. Even female scions are so aggressive. He immediately said, Xiling should have taught you how to control Ki. I want you to learn to control Ki within one year, I am not demanding for you to perfect it, but at least you should be able to use it easily. But is that thing really useful? Isn't it paying too much attention to details? Anastasia asked, confused. What timing breathing, rhythm while fighting, would these things really be useful when fighting? Shouldn't fighting be something carefree? Why has to control breathing while fighting, it is simply a torture. Zayaya shook his head, if the foundation is stable, we can make our advancements in future much easier. But. Anastasia wanted to say a few more words, but when she saw Zayaya glaring at her, she immediately shut her mouth. Although Zayaya was younger than her, Anastasia was still a little bit scared of him in her heart. She couldn't understand why she was afraid of him, maybe because Captain's battle power was much higher than her. In fact, not only Anastasia, even Bailey, Lydia, and Angeline, were fearful of Zayaya. Only, Shaq among them nodded after he finished listening. In his view, it is impossible that Zayaya and Xiling are strong only because of training their body. The talent displayed by Zayaya and Xiling has long since reached the standard of a high-level warrior, but in reality, they were not high-level warriors. Qi is a profound and complex subject that requires systematic learning. Xiling had only taught them a small part of how to control Qi, and as for the more profound things, they weren't able to learn. Shaq is grateful to Xiaoya and Xiling for teaching them such an advanced training method. After grasping the completely new training method, he feels that it is not a pipe dream that his future will be brighter, surpassing those high-level warriors. We will certainly fulfill Captain's goal. Anastasia thought for a moment, stood straight, and solemnly declared. That's right, who says that a mid-level warrior is better than a high-level warrior, at that time those high-level warriors would definitely be surprised. Bailey and Lydia weren't to be outdone, even the less speaking Angeline also made her stance clear, everyone was filled with lofty ambitions, it was as if a fire was burning and raging inside their chests, they couldn't wait to immediately start on the huge task. Zayaya and Xiling glanced at each other and simultaneously nodded. When the other scions were able to pay attention to their accomplishments, perhaps, Planet Vegeta would be on the brink of destruction and at that time, Zayaya also wouldn't have to worry about so much. The entire night was silent, next day, the dawn of light, the damp rainforest was suffused with thin mist, the wind blowing in the face caused the tips of the hair to become moist. After giving a final sweep over the planet Longju, Zayaya and others left on the spaceships. For a long period of time, Zayaya's squad will not be doing any mission, and the squad members will train on their own, stabilizing their current strength. Two months later, the spaceship entered Planet Vegeta's airspace. Coming out of the spaceport, the teammates said goodbye to each other. Zayaya and Xiling returned back home which was located in a bustling area. It was lunchtime, so under Adri's scorching eyes, Zayaya could only proficiently fish out a large amount of Earth's food from the dimension space, while looking helplessly at the small amount of food left in the dimension space. Zayaya pondered if he should once again go to Earth to purchase some more. After a hearty meal, 
Zayaya was sitting on the sofa in the hall while talking with Idri and Rebecca about the experiences of these few months. And Xiling found herself a comfortable place beside Zayaya and looked at a magazine. After learning that Zayaya's battle power had already reached 18,000, Adri and Rebecca were pleasantly surprised, looking at Zayaya with an even more satisfied expression. Then Zayaya asked about the matter regarding evacuation of the planet. Speaking of selecting the planet for evacuation, it was very important as it concerns the survival of the Scion race. Mentioning this issue, Adri shook his head, we have used all our connections to look for a planet which can be suitable for Scions to live. However, the result is not satisfactory, most of the planets are not suitable for the Scions to evacuate. It could be said that there are many, if not endless, planets suitable for living beings to live in the North area because its territory is really too vast. However, planets which are suitable for the Scion race to live are too little, because Scion is a fighting race, for them fighting is absolutely essential, sometimes even more important than life, which means the surroundings must have a wide range of planets suitable for battle. And even more importantly, it was not in the area of Frisia forces and the Frost Demon race's influence, such a planet is too hard to find. With Idri and others' connections, it couldn't be found for a short while. Perhaps only after leaving North Area, a suitable planet could be found for Scions to live, Zayaya inwardly thought. With that in mind, he suddenly said, Right, I now have a group of subordinates which are good at science and technology, Fadea race. Perhaps with their technology, they may be able to help us find a suitable planet. I will make them search for it. That's even better. Adri was relieved to hear that Zayaya had a subordinate civilization which was good at science and technology. It would be comparatively much easier if they were to search for it. He said, in the past six months, we had secretly contacted some Scions, and now there are over a thousand Scions who have joined us. Chapter 59, Gravity Machine Only about one thousand. Zayaya frowned slightly, dissatisfied with the amount. Scions have a total population of more than one million but only about thousand people believed them. Rebecca explained, in order not attract King Vegeta's attention, we had to narrow down our range of contacts, and these people are all the people we have chosen from within our circle of acquaintances. Zayaya suddenly realized, indeed, the planet evacuation has not even been arranged yet, it is not really easy to publicize Frisia's wicked intentions, or else they would very likely face complete wipeout. That's why the thousand scions selected were mostly Adri and others' acquaintances which are their former comrades and have fought side by side. There's also one more thing, recently the people on King Vegeta's side were being deployed more and more often. I fear that it is a sign that we have to speed up our search for the suitable planet. Adri frowned, as he doesn't know the exact time when King Vegeta would revolt, he was feeling the time left for them to leave was decreasing day by day. In comparison, Zayaya was much less anxious, as he was aware that Frisia would attack planet Vegeta when Vegeta is around five years old. So, within a short period of time, there would be no revolt from King Vegeta's side, which would leave them with two and a half years' time. The next day, Zayaya and Xiling were staying at home stabilizing their foundation, doing the most basic exercises every day. In the meantime, Adri's student Myers had visited their house to find Adri two three times. Of course, every time she came, her attitude towards Zayaya and Xiling was not at all friendly, and arrogance suffused her small face. But what caused Zayaya to be deeply moved was that the latent talent of this Myers kid was really outstanding, at just two and a half years old, her battle power had already reached 440, much higher than when he had come out of the training camp. No wonder this brat despised them. Just like this, every day passed. Until one day, Fadea people sent a message from the faraway pale yellow planet, Gravity training machine was finally completed. Upon receiving the message from Fadea people, Zayaya immediately used instant transmission to rush to the faraway, pale yellow planet. After several teleportations, Zayaya's figure appeared inside the Fadea people's temporary base. Duokila, did you have me come to take a look at the gravity training machine? The door to the main control room opened, and the travel weary Zayaya walked over to Duokila. Sir Zayaya. Duokila didn't expect that Sir Zayaya would abruptly appear before him in such a short time after receiving the message. For a moment, he was full of reverence towards Zayaya's magical ability to appear and disappear mysteriously. Regarding the gravity machine, Duokila revealed a proud expression on his face. It was the result of several months' research by the Fadea scientists. Please come with me, Sir Zayaya. Respectfully bowing, Duokila leads the way and guided Zayaya to where the gravity machine was placed. 
the two passed through a long, transparent winding corridor filled with the atmosphere of science and technology and quickly arrived at an enormous assembly workshop about a hundred meters tall. In the enormous workshop, there were seven neatly placed large hemispherical gravity training machines. The gravity machines were large in size, and their whole body was shining with a dark gold metallic luster. Their heights were nearing the roof of the assembly workshop, the seven gravity machines were like seven towering hills placed together, emanating an oppressive feeling. Duokila pointed at the seven gravity machines and proudly said, These gravity training machines have the diameter of 100m and were 90m high. And according to your request, the gravity could be adjusted to a maximum value of 500 times normal gravity. Also, the pressure can be adjusted to 1000 times standard pressure, and the temperature can be adjusted within plus or minus 80 degrees. In addition, to make it convenient for training, a small space was allocated for a separate washroom, dining room, and living room. Furthermore, there are also 100 miniature robots specialized in providing assistance for training which can change the speed and attack density according to the needs of the user. UMM, good job, I am very satisfied with these gravity machines. Listening to Duokila's introducing it so familiarly, Zayaya watched Duokila with appreciation while both of his eyes shone brighter and brighter, he was excited to go in and experience it personally. Thanks for Sir Zayaya's praise. Extremely flattered, Duokila bowed, his cyan skin turning slightly rosy from excitement. Step back for now, I want to experience the effects of the gravity machine. Yes. After hearing the command, Duokila respectfully stepped outside. Zayaya nodded slightly. After Duokila left, he took a few steps and arrived before the gravity training machine. Looking up, he found that these gravity training machines were really very huge. Standing so close, the towering majestic feeling was even more prominent. In front of the huge gravity machines, Zayaya's figure was tiny like an ant, an obvious contrast. Zayaya pondered and came before the gravity machine tagged with a huge one character. Inside, he saw eight huge and thick steel columns which were more than 2m long and they were spread out in all the four directions and fixed to the ground, stabilizing the entire huge machine. Pressing the button at the entrance, a light buzz could be heard, following which a perpendicular disc-like structure came down from the machine. Zayaya stood on the hovering disc and entered inside the gravity training machine. The inside of the machine was exceedingly vast. It was divided into two layers, the lower layer was not much big, mainly divided into three parts, washroom, dining room, and living room while the upper layer was the real training room. The huge space has a diameter of 100m and height of 80m so that the training room looked like a huge fighting ring. The ground was covered with shallow lines similar to flagstones, and the walls and ground were smelted from special materials surpassing even the strongest alloy and could even withstand an exceedingly strong and dense energy bombardment. He walked before a control panel on the side and set the parameters of the training room according to the numbers marked above. He first inputted the number 15 in the gravity column. In an instant, the number got confirmed, and the training room buzzed with a sound, then a tremendous downward force pressed down on his body. Hmm, it is indeed 15 times the gravity. Feeling the effects, Zayaya slightly nodded with certainty. Now the gravity in the entire training room had reached 15 times the normal gravity, it felt just like when he had trained with the weighted clothes on lookout on Earth. Then, one by one, he set the parameters of temperature and pressure. After experiencing the effects of the gravity training machine, he was very satisfied. To some extent, the gravity training machine made by Fedea people had exceeded in many areas from his original requirements. Although they took several months to make it, this was all worth it. After exiting the gravity machine, Zayaya went to look for Duokila. Sir. MHM, Duokila, I am very satisfied with the gravity room made by you people. Oh, there is also something I want to tell you. Without being stingy, he praised them with few words before his face turned stern. Sir Zayaya, please tell. Duokila straightened up, leaning forward to listen respectfully. At present, Frisia's influence had completely covered all of the north area, and added with King Cold and Cooler's assistance on the side, our situation here is not too favorable. So I want you to use every method at your disposal to find a suitable planet for living. Of course, it should be far away from the influence of Frisia clan as much as possible. Zayaya's expression was very serious when he said this. Right now, he still isn't able to directly fight Frisia head-on and can only avoid the spearhead temporarily as his strength was still lacking very much. Sir Zayaya, actually we have a complete star chart of Milky Way galaxy which we had traded from the Tuffle race. Maybe, 
we can find a suitable planet for us through it. Duokila suddenly spoke. Tough race, weren't they destroyed? Zayaya asked in surprise. Tough race had once lived with Scions on planet Vegeta but they were destroyed in the past at the hands of the Scions. Chapter 60, 120,000 Battle Power This star chart is from several hundred years ago. As we never had any plan to leave the mother planet, the star chart has always been stored in the main database of the smart computer. Duokila explained, when he remembered his mother planet, his mood turned despondent. Anyway, as the trajectories of stars would usually only have little changes, this star chart should still be of use as a reference. When Zayaya heard this somewhat unexpected information, it was as if a traveler wandering in the desert for several days without food and water had suddenly found an oasis, this thought immediately came to his mind. Duokila, I want you to immediately arrange for a group to investigate them and when you have found something, immediately notify me. I would myself go and inspect all those places. Yes. After discussing some things with Duokila, Zayaya left the temporary base of the Fadea people, and of course, what also left together with him were the seven huge gravity machines. In order to carry these seven machines, Zayaya had to almost use everything he has. But in the end, he still has to use one or two hours to transfer these machines from the Fadea people's base to the desolate planet near Planet Vegeta. Planet Vegeta, the night was slowly approaching. Zayaya asked Adri to call over all of the Adri squad's members. Little Ye, why did you call us? The door opened, and Pallades shouted in a loud voice. And then Brooke, Alice, Lisa, and others entered. As he knows that Zayaya has matured into an adult, Brooke had long ago stopped treating Zayaya as a child, and calmly asked, Little Ye, did you called us for some important matter? Zayaya lightly smiled and greeted everyone, before nodding his head, Yes, there is a really important matter. Before, I had asked Fadea people to make something which is now completed. I want to take you to see it, you will certainly like it after seeing it. Is it the gravity machine you mentioned before? Lisa asked with confusion, guessing the answer at once. Can that gravity machine really improve our battle power? Brooke frowned, they weren't able to improve their battle power for many years. But recently, seeing Adri and Rebecca's battle power slowly climb up, they felt envious for a long time. Definitely. Zayaya gave a brilliant smile, revealing two rows of white teeth but you should also be prepared, the sudden increase in your battle power will surely arouse unnecessary attention. That's all right, we just want to try it out and see if it can really increase our battle power or not. It wouldn't be too late to use it again after we leave planet Vegeta. Zayaya nodded and gestured for everyone to hold the hand, preparing to launch instant transmission. Adri squad members had all experienced teleportation several times before and were naturally familiar, thus accordingly finished making a circle. The next second, Instant transmission was launched. The desolate planet. The whole sky was permeated with yellow sands, and the climate was abnormal. The desolate planet's climate was very much like the pale yellow planet at which the Fadea people's temporary base was located, both having a very nasty climate. Only the desolate planet's climate is more extreme and the temperature is also lower. Lifting their head, Adri and others used their hands to cover the front of their foreheads, and saw the scene before them with a shocked expression. In front of them, they saw seven towering buildings standing tall like a range of mountains, exuding a dark golden radiance. Eight thick steel claws like huge powerful arms were deeply penetrated underneath the ground, embedding the seven imposing machines above the ground. Within the yellow sands, this scene appeared very tyrannical. Zayaya, are these the gravity machines you brought back? Covering her mouth from astonishment, Xiling ran to the front of a gravity machine and stroked the thick support columns which were very large and two meters in diameter with her little hands. Zayaya looked at their surprised expression, and then explained the technical parameters of the gravity machine. Little Ye, there is no use in explaining, it would be better to let us experience it personally. Okay. One of the gravity machine tagged with a number two opened, then Adri and others entered inside after Zayaya. The area inside was really vast. Even if several people simultaneously trains inside, it wouldn't be a problem. Uncle Adri, I will first set 1.5x gravity. As soon as he spoke, Zayaya set the parameters on gravity machine. Suddenly, a huge downward force acted on the body. Adri and others' complexion slightly changed but they didn't say anything, as 1.5x gravity was not much of a burden for them. Soon they got used to it, then Brooke spoke in a deep voice, keep increasing the gravity. Zayaya also did not say much and continued to increase the gravity. 
along with the gradual increase in gravity, Adri and others' complexion turned increasingly pale, and their bodies began to slightly tremble. Now, it's 2-5x gravity. Zayaya already understood that 2-5x gravity was the limit that Adri and others can endure, so he didn't increase it further. After all, besides him and Xiling, only Adri among the others have a high battle power, and even it hasn't passed 10,000 points. After Zayaya removed the gravity, Brooke took a deep breath, his body still trembling slightly. Really, I wouldn't have known if I hadn't tried it, I feel that once I could adapt to 2,5x gravity, my battle power will certainly be able to exceed 10,000. Adri was shocked, it seems that this gravity machine is really a magical device which can assist in training awe. Uncle Adri, you should first train at 2,5x gravity, and wait until we leave planet Vegeta then you can train at a higher gravity. Sure. On planet Vegeta, scions which have 10,000 battle power were very rare, but it's not that they don't exist. Even if a high-level warrior like Adri break through 10,000 battle power, it would at most create a stir and wouldn't cause King Vegeta to feel threatened. Looking at Xiling who was eager to give it a try, the little girl had an innocent expression on her face, Xiaoya just smiled and said, Xiling, you can just do as you wish. However, remember to train in moderation. Don't train at a too much high gravity all at once, and be careful or your growth may be affected. I know. Finished listening, Xiling eyes shone, and then she happily ran over to play. Then, everyone should also train. There are daily necessities in the lower layer of the training room, they could be used for some time. Soon after, everyone chose their own gravity machine while Xiaoya himself entered the gravity room no one, and began to train. In the original work, when Sun Goku was on his way to planet Namek, he was able to adapt at 100x gravity in just a short period of six days, and his battle power had broken through to 90,000. He had squeezed out his potential in a crazy manner. Even though he had almost died a few times during the training, Zayaya was not as insane as Sun Goku. As he has plenty of time, he planned a systematic training schedule for himself. First, begin with 3-5x gravity, and set the pressure to 10x. However, even though he had carefully planned, when this kind of powerful gravity really acted on his body, Zayaya knew he had miscalculated. The bones all over his body made kaka sound, his body was as if it was filled with lead, his movements suddenly became sluggish. But. I can still endure. His two eyes revealing an unswerving determined look, Zayaya bit his teeth and preserved. Then he started training, he first started with simple push UPS, and began running little by little adapting to the 3-5x gravity environment. Time flies. A few months later. More than a month after Zayaya entered the gravity machine, Adri and others had adapted to 2-5x gravity and then started training with the help of the training robots while also doing sparring exercises. And two months later, after fighting, getting wounded, fighting, and again getting wounded process, they were finally able to exploit their scion potential and break through to 10,000 battle power. For those who were already close to 10,000 battle power, even though this small breakthrough was not much, but considering that their battle power was stagnant for a long time, this boost was very valuable, as if a door has been opened. After that they no longer trained, and began to stabilize their current battle power. If they continue to train, it was very likely that they would cause King Vegeta to be suspicious, which they were not willing to see. As time went by, Zayaya had adapted to 3-5x gravity. So he made some small adjustments, rested for a few days and then once again charged toward 4-0x gravity. At the same time, the training robots were also added to his training process. From 1, 5, 10, they were slowly doubled. Soon all the 100 training robots were activated in the room. One year later, at a plane on the desolate planet, seven towering objects which were technologically advanced were neatly arranged in a row. The blowing wind had added a layer of thick yellow sand on their dark golden outer shells. In one of the gravity machine, the gravity value was set at 120x and the pressure was set at 30x. Due to the harsh environment, the entire room appeared an oppressive dark red. In this unusually harsh environment, a teenager with black hair was fiercely waving his arms, diving, moving, and unceasingly doing the basic training moves. Following the body's strenuous exercise, crystal clear sweat like a drizzle seeped out. Shoo. With the gravity machine shutting down, the entire room immediately returned to normal and the door leading to the lower layer opened. Carrying a wet towel, Zayaya then went out. In the bathtub, he took a hot bath, and the fatigue from his whole body was swept away. 
The effect of the gravity machine was obvious, Zaya had spent more than a year to adapt at 120x gravity. Although he was not as abnormal and fast as Sun Goku, he was also able to thoroughly remold his body. 120,000 battle power. Feeling his body flowing with abundant power, Zaya's mouth curved in a faint smile. Chapter 61, Four Planets. 120,000 battle power. This means that Zaya could already be regarded as a strong powerhouse in the universe, standing at the peak of the food chain and is one of the few super expert capable of dominating a region. But immediately Zaya curbed his smile. It still isn't the time to be elated. Their situation is still very grim as Frisia will attack Sions after one year, giving him very little time. It seems, I have to hurry up the search for the evacuation planet. As soon as this thought flashed through his mind, Zaya's thoughts quickly turned towards the star chart of the Milky Way galaxy which was mentioned by Fadea people. Don't know how did the selection of planets go? I will have to ask after a while. Turning off the gravity machine's power supply, Zaya got out. The sky outside was pale yellow. The harsh icy winds swept the grit flying all over the sky, hitting the gravity machine's outer metal shells producing quiet clanking sounds, and leaving faint and shallow traces on the dark golden shell from the wind and frost erosion. Due to the prolonged exposure to the harsh environment, the gravity machines were already buried less than one meter under yellow sands. Checking the several gravity machines in succession, Zaya found that only Xiling's gravity machine was still giving muffled engine sounds. This brat is still working so hard. Zaya chuckled, it seems that Xiling doesn't plan to come out until she has surpassed him. No, this won't do. Xiling is still so young, and it's her growing period, what would I do if it affected her future development? Zaya does not want Xiling, such a cute kid to have poor development in future. Besides training is a step-by-step -step process, and the key needs to be accumulated over time, so as to ensure long-term steady progress. Take Sions as an example, after every fight a Sions battle power wouldn't certainly increase much, but it will surely accumulate inside but by bit. And, when on verge of death that accumulated key will suddenly burst forth, causing that Sion to advance by leaps and bounds after the life and death experience. On the other hand, if you haven't accumulated enough experiences, even if you have been at death's door many times, you will not see much improvements after you heal. The reason is that although your potential will erupt when you are at death's door, you will face an awkward situation where there is nothing to erupt. In fact, Earth's training of continuous refinement of key also has a similar principle, just using a different method. But both methods will reach a similar goal. Xiling has been training in the gravity machine for so long, the accumulated key has been almost consumed, now there is a need to accumulate it once more. Therefore, Zaya opened the door to Xiling's gravity machine and entered. The upper layer training room was giving forth a dark red color, and the air was hot and suffocating. At center, a slender young girl was drenched in sweat, walking unsteadily while doing various exercises, strenuously punching out, jumping and diving. Her practice clothes which were made of special materials were torn to shreds from the harsh environment and were hanging down her body, bearing her body. When Zaya neared Xiling, an enormous gravity exerted pressure on him. 100x gravity. Frowning, Zaya thought, this Xiling really doesn't know what's good for her. It clearly already exceeds the burden her body can bear, and could easily hurt her body. Shortly afterward his complexion returned to normal, and then he walked to the front of the control panel slightly moved the gravity engine, until it turned off. Shoo! The whole room was immediately restored to its original state. Heaving breathing, Xiling glanced at him while her sweat soaking the ends of hair were directly dripping to the floor. Taking out a sense of bean and feeding it to her, Zaya reproached with dissatisfaction. Didn't I said to train in moderation? You, look at you, you are barely alive. Right now, my battle power is only 90,000. If I don't train like this, I will never be able to catch up with you. Xiling's bright eyes looked at him with a serious expression, her face stubborn. Zaya was silent for a moment. He was familiar with her eager to do well in everything personality. Therefore, he only extended his hand and forcefully rubbed her head, until Xiling removed his hand in dissatisfaction, only then he spoke in a gentle tone, Later, you should use the gravity machine with me, if I don't keep an eye on you, who knows if you will again act recklessly. Xiling rolled her eyes who knows what she was thinking, her pretty face was somewhat flushed red. Okay. She obediently lowered her head and answered. Next, Zaya has Xiling first take a bath. 
she was bashful for a moment and glanced left and right before heading towards the bathroom. This girl unexpectedly knows shyness, obviously was wild before. Flabbergasted, Ziaya shook his head, but then he remembered that Xiling's body has slightly developed. He realized that Xiling has already grown up, and is no longer the little girl who would stick to him all the time. Soon afterward, Xiling came out dressed in a bathrobe, her damp beautiful hairs draped behind her. Since she had just taken a bath, the water mist floating in the bathroom caused the girl's young body to appear somewhat hazy. After changing clothes, Xiling feeling fresh approached and Xiaoya put one of his hand on her shoulder in a natural manner, and his other hand hugged her waist, feeling an exquisite soft touch on his bosom. He immediately utilized teleportation, returning to the home on planet Vegeta. After eating lunch with Idri couple and chatting with them about the recent situation in planet Vegeta, Xiaoya then used space ability and went to Fadea people's base by himself. After more than one year has passed, Duokila had already selected suitable planets. Fadea People's Spaceship, inside the Master Control Room. Sir Ziaya, after a year of analysis by Fadea scientists, we have concluded that a total of four planets meet the evacuation requirements, said Duokila, pointing at the Milky Way Galaxy's star chart on the big screen. On a large screen of tens of meters length and width, a large-scale star chart of the Milky Way Galaxy was projected on it. At the four spiraling and winding gigantic cantilevers, there were four particularly distinct red bright spots. They were naturally the research results of the Fadea scientists of the more than one year. These four planets are Planet Kinra in the west area, Planet Dikala in the south area, and Planet Hongshan as well as Planet Tudors in the east area. Give me a brief introduction about these planets' situation. Ziaya said seriously. Yes. Duokila gave a bow and went on to introduce, the first is Planet Kinra, a medium-sized planet located at the border of the west area. It has a 34% dry land area and there is a low-level civilization called XILU race living there, civilization level not high. Then, the star chart on the screen changed to a light blue planet, which is the planet Kinra that Duokila just introduced. Planet Dikala, a giant planet to the north of the south area, it is about 80 times larger than planet Vegeta. There are no obvious signs of civilization on it and it is still an uncivilized area. Planet Hongshan, it is located in the northwestern part of the east area and is near the center of Milky Way galaxy. Moreover, it is a rarely seen planet having a binary star system asterisk 1. It is a young star which jointly forms a binary star system with a planet called Mishan and together with it revolves around their center. Note, asterisk 1 a binary star is a star system consisting of two stars orbiting around their common berry center. Planet Tudors, a planet in the southern part of the east area. Ziaya listened attentively. The number of planets in the universe was vast and endless, like a plate of star sand. As for the planets in the north area, they alone were far beyond count, let alone the entire Milky Way galaxy. These four planets were something that Fadea people had researched in this more than one year, selecting from the vast sea of stars, collecting and considering various factors, they could be considered to be the best among the best. Ziaya was very satisfied with these four planets. As the planets to which Scions can evacuate, they couldn't be more appropriate. Moreover, there were only a rare few other forces which have influence in their surrounding star areas. They were the most suitable places for the Scions to live and build up their strength. After taking the distance into consideration, Ziaya was much more interested in Planet Dikala in the south area and Planet Hongshan in the east area, the two planets were closest to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Duokila, give a brief introduction of the key points of Planet Hongshan. Ziaya said after thinking for a moment. Understood. As the big screen changed, a dark red planet appeared in the center of the big screen, looking very much similar to the planet Selma which he had once visited, the color similarly beautiful and enchanting. On an orbit not far from planet Hongshan, another ice blue planet appeared, the binary star to planet Hongshan Maishan. Duokila introduced, planet Hongshan is a dark red, small size planet with a diameter of 6,768 km and a sea area occupying approximate 67%. In the remaining 33%, a part of them is occupied by polar glaciers while the suitable area for living is only 21%. It is a primitive planet which has an absence of civilization. Oddly enough, planet Hongshan, though small in size, has more than 12 times the standard gravity of what ordinary planets should have. Therefore, despite its small size, it can pull and revolve together with Mishan planet which is several times larger. Oh, that's right. After speaking till here. Duokila paused. 
Although there are no traces of civilization on planet Hongshan, there is a human race on planet Mishan called Mishan race. Their height of adults is approximately 1.7 m and lifespan is approximately 100 years. General evaluation says it belongs to a low-level planet. It's very much like Earth. Ziaya looked in surprise and inwardly pondered in his heart. Speaking of these four planets, they were all very suitable as a place for evacuation as they have no large-scale forces in their surroundings. But after listening to Duokila's description, Ziaya was still more interested in planet Hongshan. Not only because of the geographical location of planet Hongshan but more importantly, because of the composition of planet Hongshan. If scions evacuate to planet Hongshan, not only will it be possible to get a primitive life planet, but there is also a planet with human civilization planet not far away, which may be of help to some extent in Sion's growth. Chapter 62, Planet Hongshan Although he has taken a liking to planet Hongshan, it still requires a detailed inspection of all the planets to select the suitable planet. Leaving Fei a people's base, Ziaya immediately used teleportation and proceeded towards planet Hongshan located at the northwestern corner of the east area. Planet Hongshan was located in the northwestern part of the east area and was very close to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So, on the way, he took dozens of teleports. Fortunately, his strength has increased by leaps and bounds and his space ability also has significant improvements. So, where he needed to execute ten teleports before, now two or three times were enough. After teleporting several times, Ziaya's figure disappeared from the north area and appeared in the distant east area starfield, which was under the administration of East Kai. In the vast pitch black starry sky, young stars were fiercely burning. Within a habitable region, a small dark red planet was continuously orbiting in an unchanging elliptical path and like a dazzling bright pearl was exuding sparkling lights. It was planet Hongshan. Not far away, another ice blue planet which was several times bigger, however, was revolving around planet Hongshan. It was naturally the other planet of the binary star system together with planet Hongshan planet Mishan. Although its body was large, it was less massive than planet Hongshan. Hence, a particular scene appeared in the universe, where a big and a small planet were revolving together and the center of mass was unexpectedly close to the small planet, a very strange scene. The power of space wrapped around his body caused him to pause for a moment in the outer space. However, Ziaya didn't think much and flew towards the direction of planet Hongshan. Passing through the clear blue atmosphere, an endless azure ocean appeared in his eyes. The breeze blowing on the ocean surface, ripples smoothly undulating, fishes moving in droves like a brown silk ribbon. A giant sea beast jumped out of the ocean surface with its ferocious mouth open. Plop, and dived down to the bottom of the ocean, immediately splashing monstrous waves several tens of meters high, suddenly breaking the tranquility of the ocean. Twelve times gravity, and bigger than planet Vegeta. Ziaya compares. His body steadily levitates in the sky, breathing a mouthful of air from planet Hongshan, the moist air had a fresh and clean flavor. Shu. Suddenly accelerating, a bright light flashed like a graceful shadow and swept past, leaving a faint afterimage in the sky, instantly disappearing towards the horizon. It's dry land ahead. Ziaya looked in front at the faint silhouette coming into view with a happy expression between his eyebrows. Passing through the vast coastline and proceeding towards the mainland, the continuous mountain ranges were gradually beginning to rise and the landscape changed from hills and forests to basin, from basin to plateau, the beautiful scenery has myriads of changes. Inside dense forests were verdant pine and cypress, lofty mountain ranges. Within a canyon, all kinds of wild animals were running around in the forest. Floating above a towering mountain peak, a pristine landscape was spread out in front of him. Ziaya inwardly thought in his heart, Planet Hongshan is similar to Planet Vegeta in terms of climate and landscape. After some transformations, Sion can immediately start living here. According to Fadea People's System Simulation, the climate of Planet Hongshan had basically remained relatively constant all these years. It was the result of the continuous actions of these three things, planetary rotation, binary star system and revolving around the sun. After taking a lap around the whole planet, Ziaya was increasingly satisfied with the planet. Looking up at the sky, he could see a bright blue planet hanging there. With an instant transmission, Ziaya went to the planet Mishan which was not far from planet Hongshan. On planet Mishan, he saw a completely different scenery. The ice blue color was much more prominent here, and all kinds of small creatures which were difficult to see were moving around in mountains and rivers, the oceans were dyed in blue similar to ice and snow, and even the leaves in the unending forests were leaning towards the color of ice. 
The ice blue leaves in the sunlight radiated a sparkling luster as if it was a fairy tale world, shockingly beautiful. This scenery is really unforgettable. Zayaya was somewhat surprised seeing the scene before him. Soon after, he entered the human civilization of planet Mishan and saw the humans. The humans here looked almost similar to earthlings, only their eyes and hair color were emerald green with a bean-sized crystal gem between their two eyebrows. Zayaya felt rich life aura coming from the gem. It is unexpected that they could concentrate their life force in the crystal. Slightly surprised, Zayaya didn't expect that planet Mishan's humans were able to evolve their civilization in such an unusual method to survive. It was very easy to find their vital parts as their civilization's characteristic feature was focused at one point just like a scion's tail, which were both advantageous and disadvantageous. Sighing with emotion and throwing these thoughts to the back of his mind, Zayaya arrived at a town inhabited by Mishan people. This was not a big town, the towering walls made from clay and stones were encircling around the ordinary and beautiful hometown. The Mishan human race's buildings were very old and plain, bamboo buildings, wooden houses, and also unique small buildings. They exuded a kind of antique feeling, but the tools and instruments which were used by them gave a completely modernish feeling. The level of civilization is still at the age of electricity, just like the previous Earth. Watching the familiar scenery before him, made him nostalgic and everything he saw gave him a fresh experience. After staying at the planet Onction's binary star for some time, and roughly understanding the general situation, Zayaya set out for the other three planets. He first went to planet Tudors, which was also located within the range of East Area. This planet is much more primitive compared to the desolate planet. The planet's astrological age was relatively large, but it hasn't produced any large civilizations yet. As for the reason why the planet Tudors was chosen as a candidate because except for some low-level and intermediate-level planet within the large range of its surroundings, there doesn't exist any other large forces. However, after having seen planet Hongshan, Zayaya's interest in planet Tudors was somewhat lacking. In the next few days he had roughly checked out planet Kinra and planet Dikola but they were not much to his satisfaction. In the end, after careful consideration, Zayaya still selected the planet Hongshan in East Area to evacuate Sions. Nighttime, Zayaya called Adri and others together and then personally took them to planet Hongshan. Adri and others were very quickly attracted to the view of Onction's binary star and were very satisfied with the planet Zayaya chose. If it's not for gravity which is slightly stronger and scenery slightly more beautiful than I would have thought that I am on planet Vegeta. Rebecca was surprised after seeing the scenery before her, she was very pleased with the primitive landscape of the planet Hongshan. Adri laughed, the distribution of forces here is also not too bad. In addition to a few intermediate and low-level planets in the surrounding star area, there are not many high-level planets. And what's more noteworthy is that no outside forces have yet set foot on the planet. So, this planet couldn't be more perfect for scions to live and breed here. I think it is mainly because it is near the center of Milky Way galaxy while the headquarters of the space police are also nearby. Because of some mysterious and secret rules and regulations, ordinary ambitious people will hesitate to come here. Zayaya explained with a smile. The center area of the Milky Way galaxy is very special and is comparatively different compared with the north, south, east, and west, four big areas which were several hundred star areas territory. The starfield territory of the Milky Way's center is very small, but its status is very special. The four major areas were individually controlled by the four directions Chi, while the center area's small territory is directly controlled by the Grand Chi. And the experts under the command of Grand Chi were many, the ordinary forces didn't have the guts to get involved here as they don't have sufficient strength ah. Oh, that's right, Uncle Adri, how many scions have you got in touch with? Talking about proper business, Adri's expression turned serious, and his dark face was somewhat delighted, there are already over 3,000 scions who are planning to go with us, although most of them are low-level warriors, with their addition, scions' bloodline will not get cut off. With the existence of Planet Hongshan, scions basically have a place to retreat to, giving Adri a big peace of mind. Zayaya nodded, 3,000 scions are already sufficient. As for the latent talent and so on, we don't need to care at all. We have more advanced training methods and equipment as so latent talent is not really much important. Hearing this, Adri and others laughed. Chapter 63, The Girl Has Grown Up Latent talent, this thing was quite magical. If placed in the scion race, it would clearly reveal the difference between bloodlines. A high-level warrior would naturally have better latent talent, and the same training method would result in even more possibilities of breakthroughs. Truth be told, if they hadn't used the gravity machine before, 
or had come into contact with Zaya's training method, who could have thought that Adri and others would break through 10,000 battle power one day. And even if they had such capability, it still wouldn't be possible for them to have a breakthrough so early. From this, it could be said that even though there are some low-level warriors among the people being evacuated, the actual strength they could develop will no way be inferior to the original Scion race. But, there is only a single flaw in it, that is probably the further breakthroughs in future. After all, high-level warriors were scant and it would be a long process for an excellent quality bloodline to slowly appear among the numerous low-level warriors. Indeed, little Ye, even though we couldn't comprehend the theory of practicing Qi, its effects are very obvious. If this training method is popularized, Scion race will surely usher in a golden period. Brooke, who has always been taciturn, calmly nodded and said, somewhat excited in his heart. Since he found out that Xiaoya and Xiling's battle power had broken through 120,000 and 90,000 respectively, Brooke was amazed and at the same time had especially started liking training in Qi, faintly treating it as a rare treasure which could help the Scions to rise to prominence. Of course, such a magical training method could not be popularized at once. They must carefully choose and only teach it to suitable people. Seeing that Adri and others were in heated discussion, Xiaoya and Xiling glanced at each other and saw a different kind of thing in the other's eyes. Although training key can infinitely enhance Scion's inner strength, it is difficult to say to what extent it can be enhanced. Xiaoya estimates that enhancing an ordinary Scion's level to 100,000 battle power is already going against the heavens. For further increase, it would depend on the potential of the said individual. However, if that said Scion can improve to that extent, it would already be a big stroke of luck. 100,000 battle power, individuals who can reach this level were extremely rare in the universe, let alone an entire race. If all the Scions level can reach 100,000 battle power, it could definitely be counted as a pinnacle race. Of course, Zaya's own target cannot be only limited to such a little battle power, what he wants is to break through to Super Scion as soon as possible. And this cannot be achieved by merely key training, it still needs many lucky chances and trials. In the original work, Sun Goku and Vegeta had only been able to turn into Super Scion after going through untold hardships. Of course, this doesn't include the two guys Goten and Trunks as they had obviously inherited very good genes, not struggling much to transform into Super Scion. Zaya knew that the difficulty level of transforming into a Super Scion is very high, but he has plenty of confidence in himself. Moreover, since arriving in the Dragon Ball world, Zaya has set himself the goal of not just remaining at Super Scion level, but also reach higher levels, just like God of Destruction, Beerus. Uncle Adri, I think that after some small changes, planet Hongshan in no time can become suitable for Scions to live. Then, should we migrate a batch of people first? Zaya said seriously. Adri nodded. Yes, it would be better to migrate them sooner rather than later. Right now, Planet Vegeta's situation is getting increasingly complicated. I feel like King Vegeta is already beginning to get impatient and may start rebellion anytime. So, we should take care of migrating people as soon as possible. I'll contact them after going back and try to arrange them in batches so as to migrate them to Planet Hongshan. Then Brooke, Rebecca, Alice, and others all expressed their opinions one by one and suggested that they should begin evacuation as soon as possible. Okay then. I will arrange for the Fadea people to build a base here as soon as possible so as to ensure that Scions will be able to live there in safety when they arrive. Zaya continued, Oh, that's right, I plan to let Scions live on planet Hongshan in future, while Fadea people will move to planet Maishan not far away. This is not a problem, planet Hongshan is in good condition and is already the best option, Adri nodded. Also, even though we Scions are a warmongering race, I hope everyone can exercise some restraint and not make troubles in our new homeland, creating a bad atmosphere. Zaya couldn't help but warn them. Regarding this, whether it was Adri or Brooke both frowned. This is actually quite a big problem. According to Sion's temperament, they were afraid that it would be very difficult for them to not make any trouble Ah, We can only try to keep them under control as much as possible. They stated their opinion. Nodding slightly. Zaya knew that keeping them under control is only a temporary solution, stubbornly suppressing them wouldn't work. But he doesn't have any clue for now and can only first do this. He would then again think about it in future and see if he have any solution or not. Soon afterward, everyone again returned to planet Vegeta. After which, Zaya again went to the base of Fadea people and arranged for them to fly towards the direction of planet Hongshan in a spaceship. However, based on the technology standard of Fadea people, 
if they want to travel from North Area to East Area, it would at least take more than two years. It would take too much time, so as to start the construction on planet Hongshan in advance, Xiaoya had to use instant transmission and go ahead first, taking a group of Fadea scientists and some equipments to planet Hongshan. Seeing that, with just a few teleportations, Xiaoya took them to distant planet Hongshan, those Fadea scientists looked at Xiaoya with eyes full of worship as though they were looking at Xiaoya as an omnipotent god. Arrow, you will first construct enough houses here so as to accommodate 3,000 people along the island continent, ah, and especially prepare a food supply system. Xiaoya advised a little Fadea scientist. Sion's appetite was very astonishing, if they didn't make enough preparations early on, then it wouldn't be good. The scientist named Arrow was Duokila's assistant. Since Duokila has to manage the Fadea people, he could only send his assistant to planet Hongshan. Understood, Sir Xiaoya. The short-statured Fadea person, Arrow straightened up his body and said in a loud and clear voice while his blue skin was tense. Xiaoya was very satisfied with his attitude. After that, he saw several hundred Fadea people each driving a huge machine and starting the construction with hustle and bustle. If they encounter mountains, they would clear them from the road, if they encounter water, they would be erect a bridge. Within a short period of time, a smooth and wide construction site was built, afterward, a bigger, more precision machine was started. With a rumbling exploding sounds, the huge machine brandished its thick steel arms and pounded the ground, with each of these machines movements, the earth shook producing vibrations. These Fadea people deserved to be called natural scientists, although due to short stature, their individual strength was not high they were able to operate this kind of appropriate and suitable machines for various circumstances. No wonder, they were able to build two magnificent space corridors on their mother planet. A few hours later, the color of the sky had gradually turned dark, and the prototype of a small-scale base that could accommodate more than 3,000 people was almost completed. Xiaoya inspected it once to check that there was no problem and then utilized instant transmission to leave planet Hongshan. He handed over the responsibility of construction here to the Fadea person named Arrow, trusting him to complete the mission. Back to planet Vegeta. He found that Adri and others were all away from home. Inside, there was only Xiling doing some simple basic exercises in the training room. She seems to have listened to his words and didn't insist on again using the gravity machine to train. Dad and everyone have gone out to contact other people. Xiling wiped the sweat from her face, her delicate face was slightly flushed due to exercising. Passing a wet towel over, Xiaoya said, Actually, you do not need to train so hard, you can take it easy. But I don't want to be weaker than you, Xiling narrowed her eyes before laughing. Xiaoya smiled and pointed his finger at her head, then dragged Xiling to sit her on the sofa before gently kneading at the young girl's neck joint with both of his hands, Little girl, you do not have to be so anxious or it could easily injure your body. Come, I'll give you a two-handed massage. Indeed. A two-handed massage technique could relax a person's mind to optimum state. In his previous life, he was influenced by his neighbor who was an old doctor of Chinese medicine, so his hands were somewhat skilled. Following Xiaoya's massage, Xiling narrowed her eyes and felt comfortable while her joints were making crisp crackling sounds. After some time, Xiling was sound asleep from feeling comfortable. This kid, so combative. Gently picking her up he went towards the bathroom while the girl's soft body naturally sticking to his bosom. Inside, he removed her outer clothing, and soon only a simple underwear was left. Xiaoya took a towel soaked in clean water and was ready to wipe her body, but before he could begin, he felt a pleasant feeling from Xiling's slim body which was filled with soft and smooth curves. Little Xiling has already started to develop. Xiaoya froze for a moment. He had habitually treated Xiling as a child, so even if he had to wash her, he did not feel anything out of sorts, but now he suddenly realized that she is a girl. For a moment, he couldn't decide if he should continue to clean her or not, after all it's a girl's body, wouldn't it be rude? Thinking of the kid that has been following behind him like a shadow from childhood has unconsciously grown up, a different kind of emotion couldn't help but spring up in his heart. Anyway, I can't be blamed for seeing her body, Zayaya shook his head and picked up the wet towel before gently wiping it on the girl's soft skin. After washing, he again held her in his arms and carried her to the bedroom and gently covered her with bed sheets before walking out, closing the door behind him. Xiaoya did not notice that after he got out of the bedroom, Xiling's closed eyes had suddenly opened and watched the door closing before she whined and covered her white fair-skinned little face with the bed sheets. Only exposing her star-like eyes, continuously blinking. 
Chapter 64, Moving the First Batch At evening, the sky was darkening. Stepping on the last rays of the sunset's afterglow, Adri and Rebecca were returning from outside after a long day. As they entered the house, they saw Zaya sitting in the living room with an ear-eater in his hand, checking out the information on Planet Vegeta. Adri stepped forward with a faint smile on his face and said, Zaya, we have already contacted the first batch of scions on our side and had agreed to gather after two days in a desert which is at 2,000 kilometers west. How about the things on your side? After two days. Zaya put down the ear-eater in his hand and spoke before thinking for a moment, I have already asked Fadea people to start building the accommodations on planet Hongshan, and it should be finished in two days. Then we will begin the first batch's evacuation two days later. After hearing from Zaya that there was no problem on his side, Adri was somewhat excited. Now that Planet Vegeta's situation was becoming more and more unpredictable, with danger growing day by day, he has decided to act decisively and evacuate the first batch of Scions as soon as possible. Zaya nodded and said, OK, I will begin evacuating in two days, I will have the Planet Onction's side make preparations. Oh, where is Xiling? Rebecca inquired as they had returned for so long but still didn't see Xiling come out. Normally, that brat would have already energetically rushed out. She had been exercising all this time, so she is tired right now and is sleeping in the room. Smilingly, Zaya said while picking up a kettle before putting several cups upside down on the coffee table and then filling them one by one. Doesn't that girl know the severity of exercising for so long, what if she gets hurt? Rebecca frowned. As a high-level warrior, she understood that training requires the balance between rest and exercise. Stubbornly training as if want to improve in a short period of time is just like continuously compressing a spring, it will easily result in its rigidity to lose effectiveness, never again recovering its original elasticity. Frankly, Rebecca was somewhat worried about her daughter's extreme attachment to training. After all, she is still a child and is in her growing period, too much excessive training is not always good. But Adri, on the other hand, found his daughter's fighting spirit very commendable, it is good that Xiling has such spirit as she is improving so quickly. How many scions do you think there are who are better than her? Rebecca, you don't have to be concerned about it anymore. Hearing what he said, Rebecca glares at him as if asking whether Xiling was his daughter or not. After which, Rebecca urged Xiaya a few more times and also asked him to take care of Xiling in future, to which Xiaya readily agreed. However, why do these words sound so weird? It's obvious that you are Xiling's parents, then why are you telling me to take care of her? It's as if they are giving away Xiling to him, really such careless parents. Nighttime. Inside the kitchen, flames were burning on the kitchen stove, and a rich and tempting scent was wafting out from inside. Rebecca prepared a table full of dishes. Since Sion's appetite was very large, consuming a large amount of food during each meal, Rebecca was busiest at this time. Every time Sion's launch a large-scale operation outside, it would be a big ordeal for the logistic support. In addition to aliens, there will also be a group of Scion specialists who are in charge of processing meat. In the original work, Son Goku's mother Jin was also responsible for handling this type of work. Little Ye, food is ready, go and call over Xiling for dinner. Rebecca walked out of the kitchen with a large bowl of food and put it on the table before saying to Zaya. Okay. Zaya responded and put down the things in his hand before walking towards Xiling's room. After knocking on the door, Zaya entered Xiling's bedroom. On a small bed, Xiling was lying on her side while clutching the quilts with her two hands and her thighs were outside, exposing her white panties and smooth and fair thighs. And one of her foot was hooked on the bed sheets, pressing down on the quilt. Like holding a big pillow, her lazy appearance was very unladylike. Smilingly, Zaya walked over to Xiling's bedside and patted her face, causing her to wake up, and said, Aunt Rebecca is calling for the dinner. Oh, you go out first, I have to change my clothes. Xiling opened her eyes, staring at Zaya for a moment before abruptly covering her body with the quilt, and flatly ordered him to go out. Upon seeing this, Zaya clicked his tongue before saying with a smile, What are you hiding, in fact, I should tell you that I have already seen your whole body before when I had given you a bath, so covering it now would be useless. Xiling's movements became sluggish and then she rolled her eyes at him. However, she no longer tried to cover her body and threw the quill to Zaya's side, before loudly shouting, I'm going to change clothes, get out of my room. Ha ha ha. Zaya loudly laughed and picked up the quilt before neatly putting it aside. Okay. Okay. 
Xiling has grown up and is no longer attached to me like before. Then, I'll go out first, you should quickly change your clothes. After speaking, he got out of the room and closed the door. At dinner time, Xiaoya and others were sweeping clean all the food on the table, only Xiling was staring at Xiaoya in days. After a while, she buried her head in the food and madly gnawed on it, looking very amusing. Time flies, two days later. 2,000 kilometers to the west of planet Vegeta, it was a desolate desert. Even if it is spring season, the blistering hot sunshine shines down on the body, giving people a scorching feeling. It was noontime. In the middle of a blistering oasis, hundred scions has gathered here which have come from far and wide and from time to time, there were still some black spots flying over from the horizon. Soon, there were more than two hundred scions gathered in the oasis. These scions were both old and young, mostly consisting of families, of which majority were low-level warriors and only a handful were mid-level warriors. These people were carefully selected by the members of Adri's squad, their battle power was generally between 2,000 to 3,000. Among the one million scions living on planet Vegeta, they could only be considered as mediocre, and even if the several of them went missing, it wouldn't cause two great waves. Adri checked the number of people, and seeing that the all the arranged people have arrived, he walked to the front and clapped his hands. Suddenly, the scene became quiet, everyone quietly waiting for Adri to give orders. Below a tree shade, when Zayaya saw this scene, he thought to himself, who would have thought that Adri's prestige among these people was so high? This is not a bad thing, at least it means that Adri could subdue this group of scions by himself and wouldn't need the others to waste their time and suppress these stubborn and unruly people. The first batch of people are all present. I think everyone already knows what they are going to face. This time we are leaving is not because we are escaping, but to preserve the bloodline of Scions, and one day we will surely come back. Adri encouraged everyone before asking Syazaya on the side, how many people can you teleport at a time, how about we divide them and move them in several batches? No need, I can teleport more than 100 people at a time, I will first transfer everyone to the first teleport point, planet, then we can talk about it. Zayaya calmly walked over, his face serious. Slightly nodding his head, Adri knew that Zayaya has always been discreet, so he did not say anything and turned towards the scions present, later, Zayaya will launch instant transmission ability, I request everyone to hold hands and form a circle. Ah, form a circle. Everyone was skeptical, but since they had all come here while trusting in Adri, hence under Adri's command, they began moving. Soon, the more than 200 people had divided into two big circles. At first glance, it looked like children playing games, the scene was quite funny. Zayaya nodded before he walked to the front of a group, then, in front of everyone's astonished eyes, his pupils flashed with a dull blue light. Swish! Clouds of dust were floating in the air and the group of hundred people which were formed into a circle abruptly disappeared. Heavens, they disappeared. That kid's superpower can unexpectedly teleport so many people. There was unrest on the scene, the remaining 100 scions looked at each other helplessly, before a burst of discussion break out among the crowd. Chapter 65, Arriving with a Scion Branch Adri smiled while looking at everyone before him, his dark cheeks somewhat rosy. From now on, their Scion Branch will embark on a long journey and perhaps will be the only branch of Scion race left in future. A few minutes later, a flowing light flashed, and Zayaya reappeared in front of everyone. Since the first teleport point, Planet, was only 12 days away from Planet Vegeta, his trip back and forth using instant transmission was very swift. I have already sent those people to the first teleport point, now I will take you. Having seen the previous scene, the remaining scions were already somewhat expectant. Following Zayaya's orders, a big orderly circle was quickly formed. Actually, some of the clever people could already vaguely see that Zayaya was somewhat extraordinary. Although he was still a child, he was able to master such a magical superpower, he couldn't be an ordinary child, right? When looking at Zayaya, except for surprise, the scion's expression was also fiery, if they could also have this type of magical ability, how nice it would be. Observing all this, Zayaya only gave a faint smile, knowing that there was still a long way to go before he could make these scions obey his orders. Rushing it wouldn't help much, he wasn't someone who have a natural king's domineering aura, so he can't expect everyone who sees him to worship him, right? This is simply not possible in reality. As Sion was a fighting race, their proud and stubborn nature was deeply imprinted in their bloodline. Although they were fearless, 
deep in their marrow's scions nevertheless revere strong people. As long he can reveal enough strength to them, there would be no need to be afraid of them turning disobedient. Strength, it was something Zayaya has the most confidence in. Then using the same method, Zayaya used instant transmission and teleported all the remaining scions out of planet Vegeta. A few hours later, the first batch of evacuated scions smoothly arrived at planet Hongshan in the east area. Continuous use of instant transmission ability had caused Zayaya to feel tired despite having abundant energy. Originally, it would have been very convenient and fast if he had used Fadea People's spaceship to move them, but couldn't do it as the distance was too far away, and the spaceship would have needed to fly for more than two years' time. It seems that later on, I have to think of another way to transfer people to planet Hongshan. After going through the teleportation this time, Zayaya inwardly thought. After having just arrived, the Scions still didn't have the time to rejoice before without any mental preparation, they were overwhelmed by planet Onction's 1-2x gravity. Fortunately, Scions were usually adapted to 1-0x gravity, and their bodies were also very strong, so when 1-2x gravity acted on their body, though there was some discomfort, they were able to withstand it, and it didn't take too long for them to adapt. Actually, some very weak Scions' breathing had become a bit strenuous, it seems that it would take some time to adapt. When everyone arrived at the base, they were astonished after seeing the scenery which appeared in front of them. They saw that not far away, the base's construction which could accommodate more than 3,000 people was finished. From afar, a small town could be seen between the mountains, and at the perimeter, there were numerous construction robots busily expanding the town outwards. Inside the town, there were enormous dome-shaped buildings uniformly standing in there. Each building had a standard four-storied structure, and inside the base, there were many training areas installed. The living area and relaxation area would also greatly satisfy Scion's various needs. Here, Zayaya had no choice but to admire the high technology of Fadea people, a small town had risen up within a few days. The efficiency is really too fast, it is simply unbelievable. Zayaya called over Arrow using communication device and have him introduce the specifics of the base to everyone. This planet Hongshan will be our new home and I hope that everyone could protect it. After Arrow had introduced the specifics and retreated, Adri stood out and righteously warned everyone. Adri was the only high-level warrior among those present scions, and his battle power was highest thus was also the most authoritative person. Mr. Adri, rest assured, we will certainly protect our new home. Yet, yeah, we will not let it become similar to Planet Vegeta. Adri looked at everyone before saying with a serious expression, Everyone, from now on, Planet Onction's scion will cut off their ties with Planet Vegeta's scion and your new leader will be precisely the one standing by my side. Zayaya. Seeing everyone began discussing spiritedly, Adri coughed, attracting everyone's eyesight. Of course, some people may be wondering, why did I chose Zayaya as everyone's leader, just because Zayaya has instant transmission superpower? Of course, this is one of the factor, but more importantly, with Zayaya's battle power, I believe he has the ability to lead us. Adri glanced at everyone then immediately released the entire imposing aura from his body. Suddenly, an earth-shattering pressure enveloped everyone causing all of these scions who only have battle power between 2-3,000 to turn pale. This formidable oppressive feeling, it is not much weaker than the peak warriors such as King Vegeta. I didn't think that Mr. Adri was so strong. With all their energy detectors completely destroyed early on, these scions could only roughly estimate Adri's battle power by feeling the oppression. I can tell you all that my current battle power is 11,600. Moreover, all the members of Adri's squad have a battle power of more than 10,000. Adri converged his imposing aura, but his statement was like throwing a giant rock in a calm lake, suddenly causing an uproar among the scions. Heavens, wouldn't it mean that Planet Hongshan would have six warriors of battle power more than 10,000? Planet Vegeta only had 20 something in all these years, ah. Since Mr. Adri is so strong, why would his nephew be the leader? Some scions raised this issue, subconsciously denying the possibility that Zayaya's battle power is above Adri, because it was too outrageous. Even though Zayaya has superpower, he could only be said to be said to be uncommonly gifted. After all, within the normal population of the universe, the people who awakens their superpowers weren't just a few. They just think Zayaya was lucky for awakening a superpower and didn't think much about his battle power. But Adri's following words gave them a big blow. I made Zayaya our leader not because he is my nephew. To be honest, though I believe that my battle power is satisfactory, however, it is insignificant in comparison to my children. 
Speaking of this Adri revealed a brilliant smile before proudly saying, How can a firefly's glow be compared with sun and moon's brilliance, since we scions revere military might, then the leader should naturally be the strongest. And, Zaya's battle power has already reached 120,000, and is the most powerful person among scions. What? 120,000 battle power? Is this a mistake, how can there be such high battle power? Everyone's hearts were in turmoil, dumbstruck doubting their ears whether if they heard incorrectly. If Adri's words from before had just caused great waves to appear in the lake, then his next sentence had directly ignited a giant packet of explosives blasting the entire lake's ground flat. You all didn't hear incorrectly, Zaya's battle power is 120,000. After speaking this, Adri hinted at Zaya with his eyes, and Zaya clearly understood that he was trying to create momentum for him in order to steadily position himself as Sion's leader. In fact, Zaya doesn't want so many eyes staring at him, but to reign in these proud and unruly scions, the easiest and the most brutal method is to use battle power to crush them. Therefore, Zaya nodded before boldly stepping forward. Shoo! A frightening and earth-shattering imposing aura spread out. The sky seemed to freeze at this moment, and the scattered leaves were crushed in the middle of the frightening imposing aura. With a buzzing noise, Zaya's whole body exuded a crystal clear light while his hair was slightly fluttering from his key aura. At this moment, the gravity on planet Hongshan was as if it had suddenly disappeared. The gravel and dust were floating above the ground, and suddenly there were countless cracks appearing on the ground. Everyone's faces were pale, and their bodies were beginning to tremble under the powerful imposing aura, but their eyes were incomparably fiery. Chapter 66, Dragon Ball Time flies, in the blink of an eye two months had passed. Earth, North Area The weather was clear, and the sun was shining brightly. The radiance of dawn illuminating the land was set off against the many beautiful sceneries making everything look beautiful. Northern Hemisphere, inside a continuous steep mountain range, a silhouette of a man was flitting through the forest, that figure's movements were agile, sometimes flashing and sometimes disappearing, and sometimes obviously would appear ahead, and in the blink of an eye would again appear on top of another mountaintop hundred meters away. Mount Bowser should be nearby. Zayahu raised his head and saw a towering erect mountain in front of him his heart unperturbed. Here mountains were towering, the environment comfortable and tranquil. The towering mountains were densely spread out and only a narrow mountain path was leading to the depth of the mountains. As the mountains were located in a remote area, there were seldom any people coming and going here, so this place had gradually turned into a paradise for wild animals. After the passing of three years, Zayaya has once again returned to Earth when planet Vegeta was on the verge of destruction, naturally, he has a reason. Zayaya has been tirelessly commuting between planet Vegeta and planet Hongshan in this past two months and has finally evacuated the plan 3,000 plus scions to planet Hongshan, bringing the scion bloodline on planet Hongshan to a preliminary scale. However, the scion races branch on planet Hongshan was mainly comprised of low-level warriors, and the high-level warriors were only a few of them like Adri and others, very low-level compared to scions on planet Vegeta. Although it will not affect the future development of planet Hongshan's scions, However, having too few high-level warriors means that their foundation would be thin, thus it will take much more time to improve Scion Bloodline. The easiest way to improve Scion Bloodline is to transfer high-level warriors directly from Planet Vegeta. But the problem is that high-level warriors on Planet Vegeta were not much, and every one of them was an important asset for Scions, so their mysterious disappearance could easily attract King Vegeta's attention. Although he doesn't care about attracting King Vegeta's attention, he has no choice but to take Frieza's subsequent reaction into consideration. Everything has to be done carefully. Zayaya pondered, he will have to take note and collect Earth's Dragon Balls. No doubt, to use them to make a wish to evacuate some of the Scions to planet Hongshan, would be a very good choice. Naturally, he wouldn't evacuate too many Scions, and every one of them will also have to be carefully considered. This time, it is very important to ensure the stability of the Scion race. Only a stable environment will allow Scions to recover and return to their peak. However, there is another problem. It is still too early from the start of Dragon Ball's main plotline, and Bulma has also not grown up yet, so Dragon Ball Radar naturally does not exist. So prior to collecting the seven Dragon Balls, he must first prepare a Dragon Ball Radar. Therefore, he has to get a Dragon Ball, and then let the Fadea people measure the wavelength of the Dragon Ball. Based on Fadea's technological standard, they should be able to make a Dragon Ball radar very quickly. 
there were only two Dragon Ball's precise locations known in the original work, the four-star ball that Sun Gohan picked up from a valley and the two-star ball in the Bulma family's warehouse. In a wild forest near Mount Baozu, Zaya's figure quickly passed through the luxuriant bushes and stopped on top of a bare rock before looking around, quietly sensing the surrounding aura. At this time, rustling sounds came from not far away, and then several wild beasts hiding in the jungle could be seen staring fiercely at Zaya with a vicious look. Roar! Low beast roars resounded in the forest, scaring a flock of birds. Courting death! Zaya's eyes congealed, and immediately a majestic aura like a flood dragon surfacing out of the sea spread out in every direction leaving behind an explosion, followed by a burst of roaring sound, resulting in a crushing pressure appearing in the forest. The wild beasts issued a whining roar and timidly fled. After scaring away the few kittens, Zayaya chuckled and continued walking towards the mountains. Shortly afterward, he came out of the forest and arrived at a slightly smooth mountain slope and saw a limestone trail in front of him, snaking up the mountain slope. At the foot of the Mount Baozu, a square cabin made from limestone tiles was standing erect under a tree shade not far away, a cabin full of oriental aura. Haha, <laughs> finally found him. Oh, his aura is not far from here, and he is coming here, I might as well wait here for a while. Zayaya finally revealed a smile on his face and looked around at the quiet and beautiful environment. He couldn't help but exclaim in admiration, Sun Gohan had actually chosen to live in such a remote and beautiful place. Mount Baozu was located in a remote area. The environment was beautiful and tranquil, and the air was exuding a refreshing fragrance. As a disciple of the master of martial artists, Master Rashi, Sun Gohan was also a very outstanding martial artist, so he naturally selected a fitting place for his seclusion training. Hey, young man, why would you come to such a remote place alone? A hoarse voice sounded from his back, he saw an old man come down from the mountain carrying firewood on his back. The old man was dressed in a traditional Chinese clothing his complexion was ruddy. With a hat on his head, and a white beard made the old man look like an otherworldly immortal. I came here to look for an object called Dragon Ball. It is an orange crystal ball which is marked with a red star inside. I wonder if Senior has seen it before. A crystal ball marked with stars. Sun Gohan touched his forehead before he pulled out a crystal ball from his arms, is it this thing? The crystal ball was marked with four bronze red stars, it was precisely the four-star Dragon Ball. Yes, this is the Dragon Ball I am looking for, I wonder if Senior can lend me this Dragon Ball, I will return it when I am done using it. Looking at the four-star Dragon Ball in Sun Gohan's hand, Zayaya asked in a sincere tone. So, it turns out this thing was called Dragon Ball, I had picked it up inside a valley a few years ago, I can give it to you if you want. Sun Gohan said while handing over the four-star ball. Thank you so much. Zayaya eagerly received the Dragon Ball. Although the Dragon Balls on Earth were created by Kami, their patent, however, belongs to Dragon God Zalama. Because it uses the principle of refraction, you can see the red stars inside from any angle. No problem, since you were looking for it then you must have a use for it, Sun Gohan had a smile on his face, completely not minding that he had given the Dragon Ball. Looking at Sun Gohan's demeanor, Zayaya was in awe, this is a martial artist's broad-mindedness awe. After he got the four-star ball, Zayaya stopped disturbing his silent cultivation, and quickly left Mount Baozu, before using teleport to arrive at the bustling west city at the foot of the mountain. At this time, there was still more than a decade left for the start of the plotline, but the west city which was regarded as one of the best large metropolis on earth was already very flourishing. Speaking of west city, the most well-known place was naturally the Capsule Corporation which had risen to prominence with great momentum in these last few years. Dr. Brief had single-handedly founded the corporation and in just a few years had swept away the whole world away relying on the magical dino caps. In the West City, Capsule Corporation, and Dr. Brief's name, there was almost no one who doesn't know this names. Randomly finding passerby to ask, Zayaya was able to find Bulma's home. Flitting through the luxurious villa guard, Zayaya jumped into an old warehouse and found the shiny orange crystal ball, and counted the number of stars above, two stars. This was the two-star Dragon Ball. Taking out the four-star ball from his bosom and placing it side by side with the two-star ball, he saw that the two Dragon Balls seemed to be mysteriously drawn to each other by some sort of power and were beginning to shine with a golden radiance. After successfully obtaining the second Dragon Ball, Zayaya's face was brimming with a cheerful smile. He then used instant transmission and immediately left Earth. Fadea People's Spaceship At this time, 
a spaceship was traveling at a very fast speed in the universe, gradually nearing planet Hongshan. With a light flash, the void suddenly becoming blurry, and Xiaoya's foot first stepped out from the void before his whole body appeared on the spaceship. As he had left space markings in the spaceship before, Xiaoya could find exactly where it is in the universe, even if it was flying at high speed. Sir Xiaoya. Inside the main control hall, Duokila was in the midst of directing the technical staff to deal with the various parameters, when he suddenly discovered Xiaoya's figure. He immediately stepped forward and greeted. Chapter 67, Looking for Dragon Balls Xiaoya nodded at Duokila and handed over the two Dragon Balls to him, these are Dragon Balls. I want you to immediately arrange for people to analyze them, I hope you will be able to quickly build a Dragon Ball radar. Although it was not mentioned in the original work, precisely how much time Bulma took to construct Dragon Ball radar, Xiaoya believes that there should not be much difficulty in constructing a Dragon Ball radar with the Fadea people's extraordinary wisdom. Yes, I will immediately arrange for people to analyze them. With a serious expression on his face, Duokila accepted the Dragon Balls from Xiaoya's hands. When the two Dragon Balls neared each other, they instantly began to glimmer. Since Duokila has never seen such a magical thing before, his eyes couldn't help but flash with curiosity. He then immediately gathered all the excellent scientists on board the ship, and together with them went to analyze the Dragon Balls. Although Duokila does not know exactly what these things Sir Zayawa had given him were, seeing him so concerned about them, he understood that they were extremely important. Hence, Duokila attached great importance to this time's analysis and decided to personally oversee it. After all, they were now under Sir Zayaya's protection, so they have to display their abilities when needed at crucial times in order to show their worth. Thus, after getting the Dragon Balls, he immediately gathered the scientists to get busy with round-the-clock analysis, hoping to give a satisfying answer to Sir Zayaya as soon as possible. Fadea Race was really worthy to be known as science and technology experts in the universe. In just a few days after getting the Dragon Balls, they had put forward a series of research directions to follow in accordance with various properties of Dragon Balls, and after discussion, decided to first carry out research according to wavelength and optics aspect. This research direction was very close to Bulma's idea of inventing Dragon Ball radar. While Fadea people were busy with round-the-clock analysis, 15 days had slowly passed away. During this time, Zayaya had come over to check the process of Dragon Ball radar and seeing that Fadea scientists were completely wrapped up in their work, he quietly left. Finally, on the 22nd day, good news came that the Fadea people's Dragon Ball radar was successfully developed. Upon hearing this news, Zayaya immediately teleported to Duokila's research lab. Only to get frightened when he saw Duokila and others' appearance, disheveled hair, emaciated body, sunken and bloodshot eyes, looking as if they had racked their brains. Sir Zayaya, here is the Dragon Ball radar you wanted. Duokila tone was very excited. As he handed the just-finished Dragon Ball radar cupped in his hands, his cyan cheeks became even deeper due to excitement. Zayaya nodded, and took the Dragon Ball radar before examining it carefully. It was a round-shaped radar with a cyan-colored display screen and there were light green square boxes drawn in a grid, with each box representing an area. It was worth noting that the reading map displayed on the screen was not a plane but a three-dimensional spherical projection. As he moved his finger on it, the spherical simulation above the display rotated like a globe. There were two buttons at the top of the radar across the central axis to adjust readings of an area's dimension. When we analyzed the Dragon Balls, we found that when placed together, they would emit special coded electromagnetic waves, so we were able to build this radar by capturing these electromagnetic waves. But after considering that Dragon Balls may be spread out all over a planet, we designed its display mode in the form of a planet projection. The resultant readings were displayed in a three-dimensional spherical simulation. And as a finger is moved across the spherical simulation, it could still change directions. It was a very user-friendly design. Pressing the switch on the radar, the spherical simulation immediately flashed with a translucent light, and as the map continued to magnify, the spherical surface slowly turned into a flat surface, finally showing two flashing bright spots at the center of the emptiness. They were the two Dragon Balls in Zayaya's hand. Obviously, this is in the middle of the universe, but this radar still automatically recognized this environment as a planet, which is a small flaw, however it is of no great matter. With this radar, collecting Dragon Balls would become hundreds of times faster. Zayaya silently reckoned. Satisfied with Fadea people's performance, he wasn't stingy in praising Duokila, you did well, worthy of being called experts in science and technology, 
you were able to build the Dragon Ball radar in such a short period of time, I am very pleased. Duokila and other Fadea people accepted Zaya's compliment, all the pores on their body were stretched out just like eating an iced watermelon on a hot day, they suddenly felt that these past few days hard work was not wasted. Sir Zaya is being polite. It's our honor to be able to serve you. Rest assured, I will remember your contributions. Saying, Zaya looked at these Fadea scientists with a smile before nodding at them and then disappeared from the spaceship using instant transmission. Earth. Zaya's figure appeared in a vast plain which was filled with weirdly shaped rocks. The rocks were protruding out from the ground like bamboo shoots, forming a cluster of hills. They had gradually weathered in the middle due to wind and frost, giving them a hollow unusual shape. After arriving on Earth, Zaya hurriedly pulled out the Dragon Ball radar. Pressing the button, and followed by beep sounds, seven bright dots appeared on the Dragon Ball radar spherical simulation. At the center position of the radar, there were two bright dots gathered together. There's a Dragon Ball at 500 kilometers east. After seeing the bright dots on the radar screen, Zaya soared to the sky, turned around and quickly disappeared in the horizon. It was a plateau with severe water and soil erosion. Due to harsh conditions, the surrounding area was almost barren and not suitable for a majority of living beings to live. However, there would always be some living beings that could survive. Roar Following an angry roar, Zaya saw a grey dinosaur chasing a wild dog, its enormous bulk was running as if a hill was crushing the ground, making the earth tremble. It's really full of wild, primal wildness ah. After taking a look at the dinosaur, Zaya turned towards the other side and walked away, not interested. He has to look for Dragon Balls as it is much more important than this dinosaur unless he was feeling hungry. Shoo! Zaya's silhouette swayed, and his body appeared hundreds of meters ahead, quickly arriving among a cluster of bushes. It should be close by, Zaya surveyed his surroundings, searching for a place where a Dragon Ball might be hidden. However, he couldn't find any traces of Dragon Balls even after searching for a long time. Hence, he used a wind blade and started cutting off the dead bushes, penetrating deep into the middle. And after splitting open nearly half of the bushes, he saw a flash of light in the bushes. Found it. After jumping into air, he arrived amidst the bushes and saw a dark orange dragon ball sandwiched between the branches of a bush, reflecting sun's brilliance. Pulling open the tree branch, he took the dragon ball in his hand and looked at it closely, it turned out to be one star dragon ball. Success, this is the third dragon ball. Zaya happily puts away the Dragon Ball into dimensional space and took out the Dragon Ball radar preparing to search for the next Dragon Ball. With two beeps, radar displayed other four Dragon Ball signals. The nearest one was more than a thousand kilometers away, but Zaya used instant transmission and instantly appeared there. A quiet mountain village. Ka. A cawing of crow appeared among the branches, it flew by in the air while fluttering. The small mountain village was surrounded by mountains. Since its terrain was low, there was a thin mist pervading the air as there was not enough sunlight. Breeze caressing the cheeks was slightly chilly, soon moistening them and giving a stingy feeling. The search for the fourth dragon ball went smoothly, Zaya found the six-star ball in a bird's nest. Putting together the four dragon balls, they were flickering with a golden light following a certain frequency. Like stars in clear night sky, their flickering was very beautiful. Ah, that's right, there is also a dragon ball with Master Rashi. Zaya patted his head, suddenly realizing. In the original work, when Bulma and Son Goku were first searching for Dragon Balls, they had to use to tempt Master Rashi in exchange for the three-star Dragon Ball. Because it was something from long ago, he had forgotten this detail. Zaya took out the Dragon Ball radar and looked at it. He might have to go to Kame House and take the Dragon Ball from Master Rashi's neck. Chapter 68, Wishing on Dragon Balls After making up his mind, Zaya again flew up to the sky, heading towards his next target. With the help of an even more advanced Dragon Ball radar, he soon found the fifth and sixth Dragon Ball in a primitive forest and a desert. Among which, the Dragon Ball found in the desert was the seven-star Dragon Ball discovered inside Ox King's castle in the original work. After gathering six Dragon Balls, Zaya flew towards the location of the last one. According to the description from the original work, Came House was not too far from the Isle City where Zaya had met Master Mutato and could be reached by using a motorboat. Shoo! After a brief glimmer of a light, Zaya appeared above an ocean thousands of kilometers away. The vast blue ocean, at the moment, was surging wildly. 
Zayaya took out the Dragon Ball radar and looked at it for a while to confirm position before flying towards the direction of Kame House. Soon, a black dot appeared on the ocean's horizon. It was a small island swaying in the ocean. After getting closer, he could see that the size of the island was only about 100 sq meter. Apart from a cottage which was mainly of pink color, there were only four to five coconut trees scattered around on the island. Haha, <laughs> finally found the Kame House. Looking at the silhouette of the island ahead, Zayaya revealed a smile on his face before accelerating towards the Kame House. At this time, above Kame House, the sea breeze was blowing, and seabirds were chirping. The warm sunlight shining down gave a warm feeling. Under the coconut tree, little specks of light trickled down like sun dust. Master Rashi wearing sunglasses was lying on a sun lounger, sunbathing while comfortably sleeping, and his dangling hands held an erotic magazine. What a pleasing scene it is, but at this time, a sudden gust of wind blew by swirling up gravel, and line of sight was instantly filled with dust, the coconut trees swaying back and forth in the wind. Eh, what a strong sea breeze! Master Rashi woke up from his nap and looked at the gust of wind blowing across the island. After seeing that there was nothing, he again lied down and continued to sleep. Above the ocean, the sea breeze blowing was a common occurrence, so Master Rashi didn't pay any attention to it. It was not until evening when Master Rashi discovered the crystal ball that was always hanging around his neck had disappeared, leaving only a hemp rope hanging around his neck. Where did I lose it? Master Rashi thought about it but nothing came up so he didn't put it to heart it's just that he had worn the crystal ball for over a hundred years, he was just slightly regretful for losing it suddenly. Dozens of kilometers away from the Kame House, a barren isle. After taking out the seven dragon balls, Zayaya placed them on the ground. The moment the seven dragon balls were near each other, they immediately started flickering with a golden light, and with every flicker, a soft roar suspiciously Shenrens could be heard. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Dragon balls were flickering rhythmically. Looking at the shining dragon balls on the ground, his heart was uncontrollably excited. Although it has already been eleven years since he arrived in Dragon Ball World, it was still his first time really summoning Shenron. Arise, Shenron. Taking a deep breath, Zayaya shouted towards dragon balls and then silently waited. In the original work, Shenron was also summoned by shouting words like this, although they were somewhat different, their effect was good ah. Sure enough, following his shout, the seven dragon balls flickering frequency became faster and faster, more and more urgent, and soon a white expanse of dark clouds floated over the horizon, instantly shrouding the entire sky and causing the surroundings to sink into frightening darkness. Bang! Thunder erupted in the darkness. Amidst black clouds, golden lightning like an angry dragon continuously shuttled back and forth and struck down, the sound of thunder's booming was deafening as if doomsday has arrived. Golden light shining from the dragon balls became bigger and bigger, more and more brighter, echoing with the golden lightning in the sky. Shenron is going to come out. Suppressing the excitement in his heart, Zayaya stared without blinking. Before even though he had seen the scene of Shenron appearing in the anime, personally seeing it felt so imposing and magnificent. Roar. A dragon's roar resounded. Numerous golden light rays surged out of the seven dragon balls, soaring towards the sky in a zigzag pattern and fused together with the lightning in the sky. A huge dragon's roar resounded throughout heaven and earth. In the sky, the green Shenron unceasingly circled amidst the dark clouds before finally looking downward with its glinting red eyes. Human, speak your wish, I can satisfy any of your wishes. Zayaya looked at Shenron and spoke before adjusting his mood. Shenron, I have a list of Scion's names here. My wish is to evacuate all the Scion's on this list to East Area's planet Hongshan when planet Vegeta is destroyed. Saying this, Zayaya raised the list in his hand, expectantly looking at Shenron. Altogether, there were more than 10,000 Scions names written in this list, which Adri and others had come up with painstaking efforts. They were all considered as qualified to be evacuated to planet Hongshan after deliberation by Adri and others, but because of various reasons could not be evacuated in advance. If so many Scions have to be evacuated simultaneously in the last minute, despite Zayaya's monstrous ability he wouldn't be able to evacuate them at once. So, at this time, he has to use the ability of Earth's Dragon Balls. Naturally, both King Vegeta's loyalists and Frisia worshippers were not on the list. It has ruled out the majority of Scions on planet Vegeta, along with the rest of the hesitant or distasteful people, ultimately choosing only trifling 12,000 people. Because it concerns the foundation of Scion bloodline on planet Hongshan, Xiaoyu regard this matter as very important, 
hence he silently waited for Shenren's reply. However, Shenren stayed silent for a long time while floating in mid-air, and just when he thought it was impossible to grant his wish, Shenren opened his mouth. Its booming voice reverberated in the sky. Human, I cannot grant your wish right now as it involves a future matter, but I can attach the power of Dragon Balls to those Scion's bodies, and this power will automatically activate when planet Vegeta is destroyed. But it is only limited to the living people, and if those Scions were already dead when planet Vegeta is destroyed, then Dragon Ball's power will not activate. Shenron's reply conforms to Zaya's thinking, thus he said, Shenron, please grant my wish. Extremely easy. The booming voice sounded, then Shenron's eyes emitted a red glow. Zaya knows that this is Shenron using Dragon Ball's power. As for how many people can finally reach planet Hongshan depends on whether or not they can survive until the destruction of planet Vegeta. Human, your wish has been granted, then goodbye. After finished speaking, Shenron's spiral body once again changed into seven Dragon Balls, and then they rotated several times in the sky, preparing to scatter to the various parts of the world. Just then, Zaya who was long prepared, leaped high towards the sky while simultaneously activating his space superpower, and immediately flying to two star, four star, three star and seven star ball before catching them. As soon as he caught them, he took a look and saw that four star dragon ball had turned to a white stone. Only after one year has passed would it restore into dragon ball. Not minding, Zaya just laughed and ripped open a crack in the sky and threw the dragon ball's turned stone into it. Wait until they again restore to dragon balls, then we'll return them to Sun Gohan and others. Since the important task on earth was already completed, Zaya was in a good mood. Next, he went to sightseeing everywhere on earth and again purchased a large amount of food, and then departed from earth. Chapter 69 King Vegeta Planet Vegeta, Royal Palace A brightly lit magnificent hall. The ivory white stone walls were without any decorations. Under the lighting, the criss-cross lines formed into veined patterns could be seen. The up and down crude and unrestrained style, instead of giving a messy and disordered feeling, it was giving an imposing, majestic feeling. As Sion was a fighting race, they disdain acting pretentiously and just need heroic courage. In the palace hall, a red carpet was spread out from the palace entrance to the front of a throne. On the throne which was raised several steps above the palace hall, King Vegeta was sitting dressed in a dark red resplendent battle armor and one of his hand was supporting his head against the throne's armrest, eyes closed and contemplating. The armor on his chest was bright and beautiful like a white jade, and it was faintly flashing with a flowing light, looking very luxurious. Suddenly, King Vegeta opened his eyes, and then glanced towards the assistant to the side, asking, Peter, how are the preparations going on for our troops? It is a sturdy, bald scion who was a high-level warrior responsible for everything inside and outside the palace. Your Majesty, as of now we have already mustered 200,000 scions. They have all answered His Majesty's summons and are prepared to have the life and death battle with that Frisia guy. The bald-headed Sion Peter's eyes were glinting with a cruel light and he couldn't suppress the excitement from his words. Only two hundred thousand Sions? Too few, have they all forgotten the pride of a Sion? And is Frisia so easy to get along with, see how many of those are left who had once followed his race? I cannot allow Sions to perish in his hands. King Vegeta suddenly stood up, his voice was angry and displeased, his dark brown hair was standing erect. Instantly a boundless imposing aura swept across the entire palace. King Vegeta, though wildly ambitious, did his best for the entire Scion race, he was really not willing to see the downfall of Scions. Following the war with Tuffles, when they had snatched planet Vegeta, Scions had to face tremendous challenges during the rebuilding process, and just at time Frisia representing forces had appeared, trying to hire them. But now, it seems accepting Frisia's service in those days had been a huge mistake. King Vegeta had long ago felt that Frisia's monitoring of the Scion race has increased a little, this was considered as absolutely humiliating to King Vegeta. Scion, as a fighting race, could die on the battlefield but cannot accept to live like a livestock who are being watched by others. Therefore, King Vegeta had long ago started to accumulate strength, waiting to have a showdown with Frisia. However, many people in the Scion race do not understand this as a considerable number of them worships Frisia. This was not something he could tolerate he could permit them to not participate in rebellion, but he couldn't tolerate them to stand on the enemy's side. After he succeeds in his rebellion, he had to dispose of these people. Anything else? Your Majesty, recently subordinate has discovered that some people have been secretly up to some little tricks, seemingly plotting something. 
Peter flips the document in his hand, do not look at this guy as having just a sturdy body, his mind was also very sharp, Adri and others little tricks were very quickly caught by him. Anything else? King Vegeta eyes sharpened, Peter, you go and investigate this matter for me. Yes. Peter straightened his chest, and responded in a loud voice before turning around and walking outside the palace. In the magnificent palace hall, only King Vegeta was left sitting on the throne with his eyes closed, who knows what he was thinking. A few days later, Peter once again came to the palace, holding a thick name list of missing people. Your Majesty, I have done the investigation. These are the name list of scions who have been mysteriously disappearing from planet Vegeta for these past few months. They seem to have left planet Vegeta. Oh? They could secretly disappear from planet Vegeta, didn't Jetanias and discovered anything. King Vegeta's eyes suddenly shone and he asked with a smiling yet not smiling expression. Jetonians were in control of planet Vegeta's outside transportation, and every spaceship which leaves planet Vegeta have their information stored with Jetonians. King Vegeta has been dissatisfied with Jetonians for a long time, and if not for attracting Frisia's undue attention, how could Jetonians still live on planet Vegeta alive? They do not seem to leave via spaceship. Peter was puzzled, if they did not take the spaceship, how did these people leave planet Vegeta? Who are these people leaving planet Vegeta? The majority of them are low-level warriors and hundred mid-level warriors. And only five to six high-level warriors were the first to leave. Only these good for nothing. King Vegeta glanced through the name list, and immediately a disdainful sneer floated on his face before he destroyed the name list with an energy wave. Forget it, for now, there is no need to get rid of them, just remove these people's names from the Scion race records. Humph, these people are not worthy of being called a Scion. We are now mainly focused on accumulating strength, it would not be suitable to complicate things much. We can take care of these people after we are done with our decisive battle against Frisia. Seeing that King Vegeta had destroyed the list, Peter couldn't understand what was in King Vegeta's mind, he had wanted to ask several times but then hesitated. Normally, people with this kind of rebellious intentions ought to have been dealt at the first instance, right? However, instead of doing so, King Vegeta removed their existence from the Scion records, perhaps in King Vegeta's heart, it is also a way left behind for the Scion race. If he succeeded in his rebellion against Frisia, those Scions who had left planet Vegeta naturally would not escape death, but if they failed, those people may be just the Scion's last hope. Only this hope is pinned on a few weak low-level warriors and mid-level warriors, can't help but grasp at straws. Four months later, on a bustling street in planet Vegeta, People were coming and going in an endless stream. Every scion was dressed in a simple battle armor while carrying bags on their back, filled with different food ingredients. On both sides, aliens with peculiar looks had opened shops and were doing business, as scions, besides fighting were not suitable for doing business. On this day, Zayaya has come alone to do shopping on the street. After moving around from east to west on the street, he only bought a few pieces of daily needed clothing. When he passed by a jewelry store, he thought of how Xiling seems to had never worn any type jewelry or such small ornaments before. So, how about I buy something and bring back for her, Zayaya looked at the shop front for a moment and then walked in. Most of the things displayed in the shop were earrings, pendants and such ornaments. Belts, brooch, etc. Zayaya glanced through these things at lightning fast speed. He really couldn't understand what Xiling would like. So, he simply bought the several kinds of beautiful ribbons, pendants, and bracelets. Anyway, he still has many mission points left in his hands, there is no need to not save them as they would become useless when planet Vegeta is destroyed. After Zayaya paid for wrapping up the several pieces of jewelry, the alien in charge of selling them, enthusiastically packed them in an exquisite little box and then wrapped it in a ribbon. Hee <laughs> hee, I hope Xiling will like these things. Zayaya smiled and put them away. Shortly after going out of the store, he caught sight of the shadow of a young person swaying over, while held something similar to Tang Hulu asterisk in her hand, eating. Note, Tang Hulu is a traditional Chinese snack of candied fruit. Chapter 70, God of Destruction Beerus It's her. After getting a clear look at the person who was walking over, Zayaya stared blankly before slightly narrowing his eyes. The person swaying over in front was none other than Adri's student Myers. Looking at her for a moment, Zayaya found that Meyer's aura was already nearing 850 battle power. Damn, she has so high battle power at a young age, it's no wonder that she is always so arrogant. If I am not wrong, then she has still not turned 5. 
Tisk tisk, this battle power is very rare among high-level warriors. Legend has it that Vegeta was already able to deal with Saibaman at the time when planet Vegeta was destroyed. I am afraid that Meyer's talent was not inferior to Vegeta and also only Vegeta could suppress her among the same age people. Fortunately, this Myers is a girl, if she was a boy, she would certainly not be able to live so freely and at ease like now. But people with potential like Myers are certainly on King Vegeta's list of people to train. Zayaya gave an unperturbed smile, anyway it was none of his business, so he turned around planning to leave. But Myers has already recognized Zayaya from among the crowd and was waving at him from afar. However, Zayaya pretended not to see, and headed in the opposite direction. That guy dared to pretend not having seen me. Meyer's two lovely eyebrows slightly furrowed. She puffed up her cheeks with displeasure and chased after him before blocking his way, her beautiful eyes glaring at him. You guy, you pretended not to see me, don't you know who I am? Oh, isn't this Miss Myers, I am in hurry to go back, can I trouble you to get out of the way? You. Her little face sank as Zayaya's perfunctory attitude had made her angry, so she grabbed Zayaya's sleeves and said, I am telling you if it were not for you being Master Adri's nephew, I wouldn't even pay you any attention. After speaking, Myers proudly raised her head, as if to say, you should be deeply grateful that I am talking to you. Yes yes, thank you, Miss Myers, for talking to my humble self. I will surely remember Miss Myers' goodwill. Zayaya was shocked, wondering where her sense of superiority has come from. He felt it really laughable and reflexively wanted to reach out and touch her head. However, seeing Myers' chubby little face looking at him, he retracted his hand in annoyance and laughed. The other was just a young girl less than five years old, Zayaya was not in the mood to bicker with her. Therefore, he intends to leave after speaking some words to satisfy the little girl's vanity. But just then, in the faraway crowd, a purple figure appeared. It was a purple long-eared creature, looking emaciated, his whole body was skinny just like a mummy which has climbed out of a grave. The two bags under his eyes were slightly protruding and it was dressed in a strange costume similar to the Egyptian pharaoh. Since there were all sorts of aliens gathered on planet Vegeta, the strange costume of that purple creature did not attract too much attention from the people around them. But when Zayaya saw the other, he felt a chill rush through his body while sweating cold bullets. God of Destruction Beerus, why did he appear on planet Vegeta? Zayaya sucked in a cold breath of air, I didn't expect to see God of Destruction Beerus on planet Vegeta. This is one temperamental god ah. There were so many hidden gods in Dragon Ball world, but the likes of God of Destruction Beerus were definitely the ones standing at the top of the entire universe, and it also wouldn't be excessive to say that he is the strongest in the universe. Annoy him, and he just has to move his finger, and planet Vegeta would completely disappear from the universe. At God of Destruction Beerus level, destruction and creation could be achieved with just a thought. The so-called heaven and earth are ruthless and treat the myriad creatures as straw dogs asterisk they don't care who is good and who is bad, in their eyes good and evil was not important, their duty was only to treat everyone equally and maintain the balance of the universe. Note, asterisk heaven and earth, or sage is not benevolent and partial, it treats all things in universe the same and fairly. If they must destroy, then they will ruthlessly destroy. The god of destruction's level is far beyond the imagination of mortals. Mortal world's evaluation of good and evil doesn't have any meaning for him. They exercise the rules of the universe, and mortals good and evil are only small principles in their eyes. They themselves are the judge of hell. But what makes Zayaya feel slightly relieved is that up till now it seems that no scion has annoyed him yet. Hmm. Seemingly perceiving Zayaya's gaze, Beerus' golden eyes looked towards Zayaya, and when he noticed Zayaya and Myers, a smile of interest appeared at the corners of his mouth. The living creature's level of strength in the universe was generally not high and experts like Zayaya were also not many in the universe. Although he had converged his strength, in the eyes of an expert like God of Destruction Beerus, converging or not converging doesn't have any meaning. Ha <laughs> ha, interesting, who would have thought that there would be someone among these wild monkeys who could train to this level? After speaking, Beerus headed in their direction. God of Destruction is coming. Zayaya wants to cry but has no tears. What sin have I committed, ah? I had only come out to buy things but encountered such a super god. Since Beerus' internal key has locked down the surrounding space and seemingly frozen it, Zayaya now has no means whatsoever to use his key. Beerus walked over to Zayaya's front and circled around him while seizing him up with one of his hands supporting his chin as if a country bumpkin was circling around a fine handicraft. Boy, your kung fu is good ah. 
You even know how to hide your key, unlike those uncivilized monkeys that only know how to foolishly use energy, they don't how to converge key, ah. In his eyes, Sion's behavior of not converging their energy was just like a searchlight which was turned on at nighttime, that brightness which could be seen all the time even from far away. They really do not understand how a civilized person does. Thank you for your praise, Sir Beerus. No sooner had he said that Zaya wanted to slap himself, why did he say Beerus' name? Sure enough, Beerus' eyes lit up and then he asked with interest, You know this god's name? When I was carrying out a mission in the past, I had seen Sir Beerus's portrait inside an ancient temple on a planet, at this time Zaya could only cook up an excuse, and push the Beerus' source to a fabricated temple. Oh, not bad, not bad. Beerus nodded, feeling very good. Although a god at his level normally doesn't visit others much, it is possible to know his name from his left-behind portrait for worshipping. Hey, Zaya, what is this weird creature, you seem to be afraid of his appearance. The youthful child's voice was earth-shattering voice, suddenly making the atmosphere freeze. Zaya's heart suddenly thumped, and his heart got stuck in his throat. Chapter 71, Frightened Oi, strange creature, do you want this planet to disappear from the universe? Beerus's face was instantly suffused with dark clouds, becoming stern. His voice was indifferent, and golden eyes were without any traces of emotions, but his words made Zaya panic-stricken. Oh my, Missy, can you not ask for trouble? Zaya was feeling dizziness, the hair covering his body suddenly became erect. As he remembered about God of Destruction's dreadfulness, he really wishes to slap her to death. For God of Destruction, destroying a planet was just a matter of shooting a finger bullet which wouldn't give him enough time to cast instant transmission and save Xiling and others. Zaya covered Meyer's mouth, and didn't let go no matter how she struggled, repeatedly apologizing to Beerus. Lord Beerus, please don't take a child's words seriously. Expression stern, Beerus stared with his golden eyes, his formidable might caused the surrounding temperature to suddenly drop by a few degrees. Boy, since you know this god's name, then you must know how a god of destruction handle things, insulting gods. This is not a matter that can be forgiven, you and this planet have to together disappear from the universe. After speaking, his finger flickered with a light and a small purple energy ball appeared on it and there were also several translucent light rings revolving around it. It is the super energy ball which could destroy the whole planet Vegeta in one go. Seeing the small purple energy ball on God of Destruction's finger. Zaya's pupils suddenly tightened, he is even using destruction. It seems he really plans to destroy planet Vegeta. Zaya's brain was rapidly turning around, continuously pondering and racking his brain, thinking of the various methods which could make Beerus give up on the notion of destroying the planet. Suddenly, a bright light flashed through his mind. He remembered that Beerus likes to try delicious food. If his mood could turn better, maybe then he would let off planet Vegeta. Yes, Beerus' temperament is eccentric and illogical. Hence, he didn't care about concealing and quickly opened his dimensional space and took out the pile of piping hot delicious food. These are the things he brought from Earth not long ago. Lord Beerus, this is some of my collection of delicious food, I hope you will like it. Ah, a superpower. Beerus saw Zaya's method, but since he had lived for an unknown number of years and had seen many people who can use superpowers, Zaya's ability did not catch his attention. However, the smell of the several steaming hot dishes wafting over caused his expression to slowly turn warm. It looks very delicious. Removing the energy ball in his hand, Beerus pointed his finger at the food with deep interest, the tempting scent of the food was stirring his appetite. He stuffed his mouth with the food, the wonderful taste provoking his taste buds. Beerus was pleasantly surprised, and poured the several tasty dishes into his mouth, spitting out the hot vapors as he ate. Haha, <laughs> it's so delicious, this time Wiss wouldn't get to eat such delicious thing. Quickly devouring the several plates of delicious food, Beerus patted his stomach with satisfaction as he looked at Zaya with admiration and said, Boy, what is your name? Lord Beerus, my name is Zaya. Beerus nodded. This time, I will let this planet off on behalf of you and this food. You should gratefully accept it as it is rare for others to see mercy from the God of Destruction. Thank you, Lord Beerus. Zaya looked pleasantly surprised, then respectfully sent off Beerus. It was not until Beerus disappeared from his sight that Zaya was able to take a deep breath, unknowingly his back had become damp. This was the first time that he had faced such a powerful god, giving him too much pressure. He was really worried about getting accidentally killed by the god of destruction. At this moment, 
Zayaya glanced around and found that there wasn't anything different with the pedestrians walking nearby as if they did not see the scene that had just happened. God of Destruction could block everyone's senses? Zayaya shuddered and got a deeper understanding of God of Destruction's power. Hey, who was that guy just now, you seem to be frightened of his appearance. Meyer's question brought him to himself. As he looked at the instigator of almost destroying planet Vegeta in a second, he got angry before pulling her by the neck to a small alley. You guy, what are you doing, are you courting death? Myers shouted angrily as the Tang Hulu in her hand had dropped to the ground because of Zayaya's pulling. You're still asking me what am I doing? Do you know just now because of your words, the whole planet Vegeta was almost buried with you. Zayaya doesn't care if planet Vegeta gets destroyed but at that time even Xiling and others wouldn't have escaped death, Zayaya felt a lingering fear thinking about it. Children are not educated properly, lacks beating awe. So without saying anything else, he put Myers upside down on his thigh, grabbed her tail with one hand and spanked her with the other. Pa! Myers was stunned all of a sudden as she had never been spanked by anyone ever since she was little. She kept struggling in Zayaya's arms, but how can she be a match for Zayaya relying on her little battle power? Only after spanking several dozens of times, he put her down. You, you hit me, the kid looked at him with tear-filled eyes while covering her buttocks as her nose twitched before loudly crying with wu sounds. She as a dignified genius high-level warrior was unexpectedly spanked and she also wasn't able to resist. Myers exceedingly felt unwell in her heart as she thought of this and her crying became even more aggrieved. What kind of person is Master Adri's nephew? Obviously, just a useless mid-level warrior and clearly only seven years older than her, why then her strength did not have any effect on him. Myers cried, and came to a realization. Teacher Adri's nephew is by no means an ordinary scion, where is there an ordinary mid-level warrior that can make her unable to move, must know that her battle power is close to 850. Looking at Myers crying tears like a rain, Zayaya wondered whether he was somewhat excessive, after all, she is just a child who is less than five year old. However, when he remembered that because of her Xiling and others were nearly killed, Zayaya hardened his heart. This Myers is too much arrogant, should make her suffer a bit. After a long time, Myers' cries gradually subsided. Well, Myers, don't cry, you know the person you had angered just now was God of Destruction Birasa, that's the most frightening God in the entire universe, he just had to move his finger and the entire planet Vegeta would have disappeared from the universe you might be the first person to have survived after provoking the God of Destruction. God of Destruction. Beerus. Meyer's eyes were red, and her head was tilted with an expression of not understanding on her face. Anyway, he is an existence that Scions can't afford to offend, there is still not anyone in the universe who can provoke the God of Destruction, said Zayaya seriously, Beerus' appearance on planet Vegeta, this matter is really beyond his expectations. Chapter 72, Immediately Transferring. Ah, at this time Zayaya gradually recalled some details which he had forgotten. In the original work, it was mentioned that God of Destruction, Beerus had indeed come to planet Vegeta shortly before it was destroyed. At that time, he had forced King Vegeta to lower his prideful head which unexpectedly was witnessed by Vegeta, casting a profound shadow over his childhood. But, Zayaya did not anticipate that such a coincidental thing would happen today and planet Vegeta has almost been destroyed ahead of time because of Myers's impudence towards Beerus which had infuriated him. Thinking for a while, his heart still wasn't at ease, Zayaya narrowed his eyes, no, as long as Beerus is on planet Vegeta, this place wouldn't be safe, I have to evacuate Xiling and others as soon as possible. Originally, so as to not arouse others' attention, Zayaya and others had intended to leave on the day before the destruction of planet Vegeta, but now for his and his family's safety, he doesn't care about it any longer. Myers. Suddenly calling her name, Zayaya pulled out a bunch of candies from his bosom before stuffing them into her hands and said, Take this candies, it is my apology to you. Now, quickly go back. After speaking, he hurriedly rushed out of the alley without waiting for Myers to response and entered the crowd, quickly disappearing. Myers foolishly stood in the alley looking, and only reacted when Zayaya disappeared into the crowd. Ah. That guy. Woo. Touching her spanked buttocks which were still hurting, Myers bit her thumb feeling wronged the more she thought about it, stamping her feet in anger. She then glanced at the candies in her hand and licked them a few times, sweet, her eyes suddenly shone before licking them with relish. Oh, delicious. The sweet flavor had aroused her taste buds, Myers got absorbed in eating and her mood suddenly became much better. 
As for Zaya that hateful guy, she would always remember him, and with her narrow-minded personality, she would definitely avenge this hatred. Residential District, Home Zaya hastily rushed in from outside and seeing both Adri and Rebecca at home, urgently asked, Uncle Adri, is Xiling not at home? That girl is resting in the room, what happened? Seeing Zaya so anxious, Adri questioned. No time to explain, you quickly inform Uncle Brooke and others, we're immediately leaving Planet Vegeta. Okay, I'll immediately contact them. Hearing this, Adri's expression turned serious, he's certain that something important must have happened, or else with Zaya's nature even faced with Frisia he wouldn't be in such hurry. Nodding at him, Zaya directly headed towards Xiling's room, and directly pushed open the door without knocking and went inside. In the room, Xiling was lazily sleeping on the bed, tucked inside a thin bed sheet. Zaya glanced at her, and without saying anything, directly picked her up with the quilt in his arms. Ah, what are you doing? Xiling woke up with a start. Don't speak for now, it's urgent, wait until we leave from here. Zaya's stern expression caused Xiling to close her mouth who was filled with many questions. They then arrived in the living room. At this moment, Adri had put down the communicator in his hand before looking at his daughter who was still wrapped in a quilt with surprise and said, I've contacted Brooke and others, they are waiting at home. Good, then we will go first. Finished speaking, Zaya nodded his head and then launched instant transmission. In the next second, the scenery before their eyes changed and the four people appeared on the distant desolate planet. On the desolate planet. The sky was dim and the air was icy and bone-chilling. There were seven huge erect towers placed there standing straight like soldiers stationed at the border, unyielding and proud. And motley traces had appeared outside their surface because of wind and rain. Uncle Adri, you should first wait inside gravity training room, I will go and pick up the others. Finished speaking, Zaya immediately again launched instant transmission and left. Seeing Zaya looking so hurried, Xiling asked with puzzlement, What happened, Zaya is so anxious, could it be Frisia is attacking planet Vegeta? Living with him for so many years, she had never seen Zaya so panicked. In her impression, Zaya has always been calm and confident, such that in her mind, Zaya would always be a legend that would never lose. What could make him lose his self-control? After thinking over, she could only surmise that Frisia is going to attack planet Vegeta. Adri shook his head, and clenched his fist, staring towards the direction of planet Vegeta with a grave expression, Is Frisia really attacking? Xiling you first go to the gravity training room and change your clothes. Looking at her daughter's wrapped in the bed sheet appearance, Rebecca frowned as she can't keep watching any longer. Although Scions by nature were bold and uninhabited and doesn't care about small things, she is a big girl, how can she be so sloppy? Fortunately, when Fedea people built the gravity training room, they had built the entire training room extremely luxurious. In addition to the upper floor training room, there was also a lower floor which was divided into a dining area, washing area, and living area, and with daily necessities stored inside. Xiling looked at her appearance and made a sound of surprise as she rushed into the gravity room to change her clothes. Shortly thereafter, Brooke, Pallady, Lisa, Alice, and others were transferred following with the members of Zaya's squad, Shaq, Anastasia, Angeline, and others. Zaya had already told the members of Zaya's squad the truth when he was planning the evacuation to planet Hongshan. At that time, the members of his squad behaved as if they were injected with chicken blood, looking at Zaya with eyes full of worship. Captain, what happened? Is Frisia going to attack? Shaq's handsome and rigid expression looked somewhat ugly. Yeah, what happened that you had to transfer us so hurriedly? Brooke and others asked. Zaya shook his head and organized his words before speaking, it's not Frisia who's going to attack, but at present, it is even more dangerous to stay on planet Vegeta. What happened? Adri frowned after hearing him. If it's not Frisia who's going to attack planet Vegeta, it's reasonable to say that no matter what happens, they should be able to handle it with their current strength. So why did Zaya say that it's even more dangerous to stay on planet Vegeta? Did something unexpected has happened? What could it be? Zaya took a deep breath and spat out a turbid key, if it was only Frisia, I had the ability to transfer you all even when the planet was being destroyed but you know who I just saw on planet Vegeta. God of Destruction, Beerus. That honorable god has appeared on planet Vegeta. Remembering of his brief encounter with the death god a moment ago, Zaya sighed in his heart. It could be said that his luck was good, if the god of destruction wasn't such a gourmet, he would have no chance to survive. 
In the presence of the God of Destruction, his superpower was as if it had solidified, and couldn't be utilized. Chapter 73, Ah, Will Not Observe God of Destruction, Beerus Adri stood frowning at his original place while pondering, but despite his abundant experience, he couldn't remember ever hearing this name. Shaking his head, he looked at Brooke and others and similarly saw them shaking their heads with puzzlement. While Shaq, Anastasia, the younger generation members didn't even comment. Zayaya saw that they did not even know any God of Destruction title, so they naturally also weren't able to clearly understand his worries. As Beerus had been in deep sleep for so many years, few people in the universe know his name. Lightly sighing, he said, God of Destruction, Beerus is a god from ancient times, and is regarded as the most powerful god in the universe. Frisia's strength compared to God of Destruction is like a firefly's light compared to a bright moon's brilliance, there is basically no comparison. Even if Frisia can become thousand or ten thousand times more powerful, God of Destruction would only need to move his finger to kill him. So strong. Xiling's mouth was opened wide in astonishment. Yet, yeah, his sneeze is enough to destroy planet Vegeta. Xiaoya sighed. Even if Frisia's strength can increase by a thousand or ten thousand times, or even reach Majin Buu's level, God of Destruction Beerus could kill him easily with just a finger. A sneeze to destroy planet Vegeta? For Frisia who is powerful by thousand or ten thousand fold, only need to move a finger? After listening to Zaya's explanation, Adri and others couldn't help but take a breath of cold air, stunned expression on their face. In their eyes, Frisia's strength was already considered as unparalleled, and now a god of destruction has unexpectedly sprung out, who can easily kill Frisia even if he could become thousand or ten thousand times stronger. Heavens! Is it that we can't keep up, or the world has become too fast? Before even with several thousand battle power, we were able to move unhindered throughout the universe, then why now were we considered weak as an ant? That, that, god of destruction should not be a demon, then why are you still worried that he would destroy planet Vegeta? asked Anastasia which is also something everyone was wondering about. Zayaya shook his head, although god of destruction is a god, he is a god who is responsible for destruction and extermination. His duty is to exterminate, and someone only has to make him unhappy and he would heartlessly destroy their entire planet. God of Destruction is such a capricious god. After listening to Zayaya's explanation, everyone was suddenly speechless, as Zayaya has said, staying at planet Vegeta was indeed extremely dangerous. If by any chance God of Destruction became unhappy, everyone would die. At the same time, they also realized that their minuscule amount of strength was not even worth mentioning in front of a real expert. What was there to be so proud of? Look at how other could easily destroy a planet, destroy a galaxy, and once in a while could also light big fireworks in the space, while they were still fooling around on a small planet, this comparison shows that they obviously were at a low level. They are still too far apart. In fact, it could be said that as Adri and others battle power was more than 10,000, they were already able to live very comfortably anywhere in the universe, after all, freaks like Frisia could be counted on one's fingers, while the likes of God of Destruction were simply beyond the norm. Even youngsters like Shaq, if are a little bit careful could live well. Just look at the likes of Raditz, he only had around 1000 battle power but was so overbearing when he had just appeared. He was able to move unhindered throughout the universe, then surely had met other living beings. And, when you look at how he acts so arrogant, it is clear that the overall strength of other living creatures as a whole in the universe is really very low. You could live on the desolate planet for now, and if planet Vegeta is not destroyed after few days then we can return at that time God of Destruction Beerus should have left. All right, then we can only do it that way. Adri nodded reluctantly, they could only do this for now as they were helpless against the situation. Planet Vegeta Beerus was leisurely strolling on the street, his favorite thing. Apart from destruction, was to sleep and look for delicious food. After waking up from slumber this time, he had secretly snuck off to the mortal world concealing it from Wiss and then had come all the way to the Milky Way galaxy while conveniently lighting off fireworks if happened to see a planet which is not pleasing to his eyes, and at last arrived on planet Vegeta. Here, he was finally able to eat a bit decent food, or else he would have been unable to bear and again would have destroyed a planet. Just a moment ago, he met a scion which he found interesting, and had gotten a little delicious food from him. Beerus could swear that he had only eaten such delicacies before several times, if counted it has already been, 100 million years or 300 million years that he had last eaten such delicacies. Ah, what a wonderful taste it was. Licking his tongue, 
he could still feel the leftover flavor of the food in his mouth, Beerus wish he could still have some more. Lord Beerus has been greatly merciful today and had given that boy face. Beerus was strolling on the street with both hands behind his back, when suddenly a bright light flashed in his head. Since the little scion had so many delicacies with him, then the ruler of this planet wouldn't definitely have anything bad. After thinking for a moment, Beerus seemed to have found a target, his languid and somewhat dejected spirit was suddenly uplifted. Well, let's first find this planet's royal palace, it should have more delicious things to eat. Finished speaking, Beerus slowly soared to the sky and his golden eyes flashed with a bright light, before in the blink of an eye he was gone towards the direction of the palace. In the space of another dimension. At the end of a long snake road, there was a vast empty space which was pervaded by a sacred serene aura and the blue sky was filled with light yellow clouds. Below, there was a very small planet, which was the residence of North Kai who was the administrator of entire North area. North Kai's planet. North Kai was nervously leaning over a lawn, his body was like an ant on a hot pan, and his pale white lips were trembling. Ayaya, Lord Beerus has actually appeared on planet Vegeta, and if by any chance that gang of scions angered Lord Beerus, then my North area will again suffer a calamity. North Kai wailed, greatly agitated. When he thought of how his planet was so big in the past, but because someone in the mortal world had angered Lord Beerus, it was shattered by the god of destruction till it became so small. This time, there must not be anyone making Lord Beerus angry. North Kai clasped his hands, praying non-stop. He did not want his small planet to once again be destroyed or he wouldn't have any place to live. If it happened, he, the Grand North Kai's lifetime reputation would be completely destroyed, then whenever he met other King Kais, he wouldn't have any face to lift his head. North Kai's obese body continued to lean over the ground, carefully observing Planet Vegeta's situation. Suddenly, an icy glance looked over from Planet Vegeta's direction, right at his eyes, that icy bone-chilling glance instantly penetrated his soul. Ah North Kai shouted, his whole body bounced up as his face showed a terrified face. Terrible, terrible, I was discovered by Lord Beerus, I hope Lord Beerus would be magnanimous and won't come over here ah. North Kai's face was deathly pale and his whole body was trembling. North Kai anxiously ran around in circles before hiding inside his small house on the planet. Boohoo, I swear I will not again observe the mortal world until Lord Beerus has left the North area. Chapter 74, I do not want to see Planet Vegeta. Planet Vegeta, Royal Palace, in a training room. In a dark environment, even though two three Cybomen were surrounding a youth, they didn't dare to launch the offensive and were hesitating. These Cybomens were cultivated using the highest technology, and each of them has battle power around 1000, while the figure surrounded at the center merely looked like a less than five years old young scion, but even so, the Cybomens instinctively felt terrified. Snort. That little scion coldly snorted and adjusted its body's posture in preparation for the attack. In a flash, the little scion suddenly sped up, the illusory afterimages covered the whole field of vision, and then afterward, the scene lit up and flashed, the sparkling and bright lustrous energy was just like as it is if it was inexhaustible, after the rumbling noise, smoke pervaded the line of sight. When the smoke slowly dispersed, the room only had that young scion standing arrogantly. Trash. Disdainfully sweeping his eye over the charred cybomen inside the pits, the young scion said in an indifferent and flat voice before draping a cloak over his shoulder and leaving the training room. After that figure went away, the scion who was in charge of cleaning up the mess, glanced at the ground full of potholes and sighed with emotion, King Vegeta's son is really powerful, he is already able to defeat a Cybomens at such a young age, in the future he would definitely become an outstanding king. Yes, Scions will get more and more powerful under the leadership of King Vegeta and His Highness Prince. Another middle-aged Scion glanced at Vegeta's disappearing direction with a look of admiration. On planet Vegeta, there is a clear distinction between strong and weak. Scions like them who have such average latent talent could only do some miscellaneous tasks. If Scion race has to develop, it would need talents like King Vegeta's son. In the winding corridor of the royal palace, Vegeta was striding forward with a calm face. Although his battle power had already broken through past 1000 points, he was still not satisfied. At this time several imperial bodyguards hurriedly ran over from the side of the winding corridor, their hands holding a big plate of food. Seeing this, Vegeta felt that it was slightly strange, so he held back one of the bodyguards. Why are you in so much hurry, and who is this food for? Vegeta asked baffled. That bodyguard was sweating profusely as he replied, just now, 
a strange man arrived in the palace so His Majesty had ordered us to bring this food. His Highness Prince, please let me go, that guest has been waiting anxiously. Letting go of his hand, Vegeta was somewhat puzzled as he looked at the receding back of the bodyguards, who is this guest that had caused father to arrange so much food for it. After pondering, Vegeta headed toward the royal palace hall. As he neared the palace hall, he heard verbal insults coming from inside the hall, it was a very unfamiliar sound. Bastard, did you told people to prepare this garbage to entertain this god? King Vegeta, I am telling you, you wouldn't be able to withstand the price of deceiving god of destruction. Beerus' voice was imposing and indifferent. Lord Beerus, this lowly person doesn't dare to deceive you, this is indeed the most delicious food on planet Vegeta. King Vegeta's voice was somewhat terrified and his body completely lay prostrated on the ground, face extremely distorted. King Vegeta was a very prideful and stubborn person, similar to Vegeta in future, but in front of Beerus, he could only bow his proud head and speak humbly. Because if the other party got angered, Planet Vegeta will completely disappear from the universe. Humph. Beerus' leg was stepping on King Vegeta's head while he picked his ear with his finger and then brought it to his mouth for blowing on it, before showing an impatient look. Honestly, these foods prepared by King Vegeta has made him very dissatisfied, they were completely not tasty as the food he had eaten before. This is delicious, you say. Beerus glared with his golden pupils and smashed the plate of food at King Vegeta's head with one hand as King Vegeta could only humbly endure. What's going on, who is that person, and why is father enduring such a big humiliation? Vegeta was hiding behind the rock pillars, and could not believe the scene playing out before him, the dignified king of science. How can he act so meek and subservient? Vegeta clenched his fist, feeling somewhat unreconciled. Hum. Noticing that there was a person hiding behind the rock pillars, Beerus glared at the pillar as his boundless might penetrated the rock, hitting Vegeta. Immediately, Vegeta felt as if he was hit by a lightning bolt, and his body stiffly fell to the ground, becoming immobile. A suction force came from both of Beerus' hands and then he held up Vegeta by his head. Lord Beerus, please let off this lowly person's child. King Vegeta's face revealed a frightened expression as he pleaded while clenching his teeth, this lowly person will immediately order people to once again prepare delicious food. No need. Beerus' face was covered with dark clouds as he hurled Vegeta away. Bang! A hole appeared in the wall, the enormous impact made Vegeta sink into the wall causing the bones in his body to break. Bored, Beerus flicked his fingers and said, Really boring, I thought that I could eat delicious food. There is really nothing good about this planet Vegeta. After speaking, Beerus' figure suddenly disappeared from the palace. Seeing that God of Destruction had disappeared, and confirming that he was gone after a long time had passed, King Vegeta wiped the cold sweat of his head. He really did not think the legendary god of destruction, Beerus would actually appear in front of him, if it was not for the legend passed down in the Scion royal family, the consequences would have been really too horrible to contemplate ah. The real god of destruction is even more frightening than the legend. Thinking of the deep, bottomless power similar to a boundless ocean, King Vegeta was filled with lingering fear and when he came to himself, he realized that his clothes had been soaked in cold sweat. Taking a few quick steps and arriving beside Vegeta, King Vegeta carefully examined him and found that Vegeta only has some broken bones causing him to slightly feel relaxed, and then he quickly summoned the guards to carry Vegeta to the healing cabin to treat his injuries. Vegeta is his most valued son and is also the most outstanding warrior among scions, there cannot be even a little accident. King Vegeta stayed alone in the main hall, his expression changing, and it couldn't be fathomed what he was thinking. In the boundless universe, God of Destruction Beerus was drifting around with boredom. At this time, a colorful streak rushed over from the space before appearing in front of the God of Destruction Beerus as fast as lightning. Beerus Sama, you had again secretly snuck out. A delicate voice could be heard before a silver haired person of unknown gender wearing a maroon divine robe could be seen walking over step by step while leaning on a divine scepter, while a blue necklace was magically floating around his neck. Oh, Wiss, you have come. Beerus was lying on his back in the space, both of his hands were behind his head while drifting in the space. Ah, Beerus Sama, this time after coming out you have destroyed another 134 planets, if you do this then it will put the Supreme Kai in dilemma. Wiss was holding his forehead with his hand, but his eyes did not have even a little bit of troubled expression. Tut. Beerus clicked his tongue, face indifferent, I had only destroyed few planets, nothing more. Just have those Supreme Kais recreate some planets. It takes a long period of time to nurture a planet, 
and especially planets with living beings. If the Supreme Kai's creation speed could not match up with the destruction speed of Beerus Sama, then it will be a big problem. Beerus' face was disdainful, he shifted the topic and asked, Hey, Wiss, I had eaten a rarely seen delicious food just now when you were not here, that taste was really unforgettable, its aftertaste was still lingering in my mouth. Really? Beerus Sama, did you leave anything for me? When delicious food was mentioned, Wiss also looked interested. Those delicious food were in such a low quantity, how could there be anything left for you? It's too sad then, did Beerus Sama ate it on this planet? Wiss pointed his scepter at the distant dark red planet Vegeta. Yes, but it's a pity that there is no more delicious food left. Mentioning planet Vegeta, Beerus was still somewhat angry, he really wants to smash the energy sphere on planet Vegeta. However, Beerus has already promised Zayaya to let go off planet Vegeta, if he couldn't keep his promise then it will undermine the reputation of the God of Destruction. Oh, that's right, Wiss, who is the ruler of this area? Beerus turned around and asked. Wiss raised his scepter and checked for a second before revealing the image of Frisia on the blue crystal ball floating above the scepter, Beerus Sama, the ruler of the nearby starfield is a guy named Frisia, who is a member of Frost Demon Race. Beerus stroked his chin and said, well, pass on a message to Frisia and say him that I do not want to see planet Vegeta and make him destroy it. Yes, Beerus Sama. Wiss answered. It's just destroying a planet, for them, it was just like drinking water, and is already something common. Letting others destroy planet Vegeta couldn't be regarded as personally destroying it, this will maintain God of Destruction's prestige and also fulfill God's promise. Chapter 75, Image Training The Desolate Planet Unknowingly, one month passed and planet Vegeta was still safe and sound. Adri and others were finally able to cast aside their worries, but just in case, Zayaya did not take them back to planet Vegeta, and also did not send to planet Hongshan, but let them stay in the gravity training machine and do simple training exercises. After this incident, Adri and others also clearly realized that their strength in comparison to genuine experts was still much lacking, so they had a change of heart and wholeheartedly put their hearts on training. However, as veteran warriors and after being proficient a bit in the concept of Ki, they naturally realized that training was a step-by-step -step process that involves hard work and relaxation side by side. Working too hard can sometimes be counterproductive instead. Appropriate leisure is necessary. They were not like Shaq and others, those young people in their growth period and have vibrant cells, and were in their prime time for increasing strength. Naturally, even if they are in their prime time, they should only do what they can, and not tire out their bodies. Number 3 Gravity Machine Several members of the Adri squad were sitting on the floor in a circle while eating and chatting, and next to them were placed several plates of appetizers. I say Adri, since we have obtained these gravity training machines, it seems your training speed have increased. The rough middle-aged Pallady sat cross-legged on the floor, gorging down the delicacies. Captain has always been the one with the highest battle power among the few of them, and after obtaining the gravity machine, his strength has increased by a lot. To be honest, he was very envious of Adri's training progress. Ha ha ha, this is because I work much harder than you, if you work hard like me, your strength will surely increase very fast. Adri laughed heartily and stuffed a hyacinth bean into his mouth, feeling very happy. His battle power had already reached 15,200, there were not many on planet Vegeta who have battle power higher than him. This would have been unimaginable to even think about in the past, but now not only has it become a reality, he is also confident that he will become even more stronger in future. Only recently his growth speed has significantly slowed down making him wake up from the excitement. Come on, it's because Zayaya is not there to give me pointers, if I could also compare notes with Zayaya all day long, then I would have definitely already surpassed you. Pallady curled his lips with disdain, but he was envious that Captain could have Zayaya such a pair of children, look at their strength, it already exceeds theirs by several thousand. So far, in the Adri squad except for Adri and Rebecca, others' battle power was still lingering around 12,000. The strongest Brooks' battle power was nearing 13,000, but compared to Captain, there was still a significant difference which was further gradually widening. Although Adri's recent growth has decreased, it was still an enviable speed compared to them. Adri laughed out loud, he was able to elevate it so fast, of course, there is the gravity machine, but comparing notes with Zayaya also had a lot of effect on his advancement. After he had laughed, Adri's face became serious as he said to everyone, Currently, the number of scions on planet Hongshan are already reaching 3,000. 
Zayaya told me that another 15,000 people will be evacuated when Planet Vegeta gets destroyed. And except some of them that might get killed in battle at the time of Planet Vegeta's destruction, a conservative estimate is that more than 12,000 Scions will appear on Planet Hongshan. 12,000 ah! It's not small. Yet, yeah, it's already quite a lot. Everyone whispered in amazement, then stopped speaking. More than 10,000 Scion can survive is already a lot, but compared to the millions at their prime, this number was really somewhat shabby. In future, Scions will really become sparse. They only hold one thought in their heart Scions cannot decline from now on. Right, I think King Vegeta may have already realized what we have been doing. Adri suddenly changed the topic and said. Impossible, if King Vegeta had really realized that we secretly evacuated people, why was there not any reaction? Pallady looked surprised. The reason why he did not react, I think he is obviously feigning ignorance. Brooke coldly smiled. What good is it to him? One possibility is that his preparations are at the critical moment, so there is no room for any mishap. Civil strife occurring at this time is not advantageous for him. Their battle power was already more than 10,000, and if a civil war were to break out for mere 3,000 low-level warriors, Sion race's strength will surely get weakened which King Vegeta was not willing to see. He is planning to settle accounts after the rebellion. Alice raised her eyebrows, she was the youngest among them and usually the most lively of all. Maybe that's the plan, but it's not going to happen until the defeat of Frisia, and in case of failure, they would be in no position to discuss. Actually, I think King Vegeta might also want to leave Sion race away out. Adri opened his mouth and said. Adri's words silenced everyone. They were adults and had to take all factors into consideration. King Vegeta let them take people away without any other considerations. The truth that don't put all eggs in one basket asterisk everyone could understand, no reason King Vegeta also couldn't. Perhaps, King Vegeta is already prepared for the worst. Then, is it possible for King Vegeta to give up on the rebellion against Frisia? Thinking of the question of giving up, because of the Scion pride, death is preferable to dishonor, how could they become afraid of fighting? It can be said to be foolhardiness, in any case, King Vegeta could not tolerate Sion bending their knees and serve before Frisia. Of course, the more important reason is that King Vegeta is not well aware of Frisia's horror. If he was, he would probably wouldn't have such thoughts. Just as he could put down his kingly arrogance in the presence of God of Destruction. Strength differs to a certain extent, yielding to a strong man does not mean losing dignity and at least feel better in heart. However, it is already too late. Frisia will not let Sion's off even if King Vegeta does not rebel. Lisa's hoarse voice sounded. Development of things will not change according to their wishes, so all they can do right now is to lead the portion of Planet Hongshan Sion's. The few of them were silent for a while, then started talking and laughing about other things. As for the youngsters like Shaq, it was the time when their strength would have a rapid increase, so all of them were madly training in the gravity training machine. As Adri and others have ample experience, they will give advice from time to time. Number 1 Gravity Machine The spacious training room was ordinary as usual, and the gravity room and other parameters were not turned on. At the center, Zayaya and Xiling were sitting cross-legged while facing each other, both of them resemble monks sitting motionless in meditation. Looking closely, it could be seen that the two of them frowning, the whole body slightly trembling, and were slightly sweating on the forehead. Both were doing image training. In the imaginary space of consciousness, the whole space's dimensions different from reality, two people were fiercely fighting. Their figures were in the middle of fighting, fighting from ground to sky, and again from the sky to ground. Their fierce fight everywhere had caused shaking and rumbling sounds, loud noises and explosions were unceasing. Hoo hoo, there were countless illusory figures each one with Xiling's appearance, they quickly moved and soon spread out throughout the space of consciousness. Xiling's eyes flashed and raised her illusory delicate and then countless illusory images suddenly started attacking fiercely at Zayaya. Kaka. Zayaya met Xiling's fists head on, and then his body like an arrow swiftly shuttling back and forth, every attack of his was nimble but contained suffocating strength. The illusory figures dispersed one by one. Rumble. The space in the consciousness suddenly shattered. Zayaya and Xiling's bodies trembled as they panted heavily, and after some time of adjusting, their breathing again became level. Image training is an extremely profound training method, it is a training of transforming ki. Different from the ki which tempers physical body and energy, image training is used to temper spirit and consciousness and is a method to strengthen combat instincts. 
In the original work, Sun Gohan and Krillin had done this kind of training on their way to planet Namek. Image training is not simply training energy. It is a bit like Taoism in Zaya's past life. It is, to some extent, a kind of spiritual enlightenment and has certain advantages in developing unique skills and to transcend physical body's shackles. Zaya and Xiling were using image training to increase their combat experiences, and the results are remarkable. After training for some time, they found themselves even more adept at controlling their energy.